Well, cool. I'm Don the Crown. Uh, Twitch TV. Uh, I've been play. I play melee mostly. I've been playing. I started off as a champion cycloner and uh, farmed up a headhunter for both me and the guy who I leveled up with, uh, Nazroth. And we uh, so we both have a headhunter in like the first like four days of the league. Uh, and then I made what a nice. bleed vortex assassin juicer character, which is probably worth about like 500 exalts at this point. Uh, and then I went and I have a like 1600 plus dexterity berserker slake loner with hollow palm and it's got like 24 million DPS. So I've been playing that and, uh, I'm not really sure what the next bill on the horizon is going to be, uh, kind of looking at a few different things. Uh, probably like typically I use my Don versus stream event, which is like a once a month type of event where I like go from like level one to maps. Uh, I'll probably let like my subscribers pick whatever I'm going to level with, and then we'll probably do a build based off whatever that is. So we're going to see <laughs> what happens. I think the league has been pretty fun and uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, more good stuff. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much brilliant. I just, in the beginning wanted to say before that welcome to the faded connections podcast episode 27, but uh, <laughs> I, I threw that in now. Perfect. Um, yeah, that, that sounds amazing. I'm uh, glad to have you back on the show. And uh, welcome, Burger Brush, as well. you here for the first time. Will you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to this week so far? Thank you very much for having me, first of all. And uh, I don't know. I'm more of a casual kind of person when I play PeeWee. I've been playing for a while, but I still never do anything like crazy. I never really juice that hard. Uh, any league i'm a more community driven person i guess but this league i've just been working on a ton of builds uh, never been smart enough to actually make any of my own builds but last league i started working on making some of my own builds and uh, then this league i had one build that blew up and uh, i've got a ton of uh, support from it and then i just noticed that there's a lack of um, builds for like complete beginners in this game like people who are looking for anki's arc type of type of witch build and uh so many people have been asking me for help and all that stuff. So I just figured, well, since I started making builds now and, and there seems to be a need for these kind of things, I started working on a project that I called Project Builds, where I try to educate myself as well on things that I don't know. Like I've never made a witch character ever, so I have no idea how to make a build like that. But then with Project Builds, I'm trying to make a build that is viable from League Start and end game content. And I'm trying to make a build for every single Ascendancy in the game, every single one. So, so far, I think I have five or six of them finished, and I'm still working on the next three to four, maybe. Um, the guides aren't precisely finished yet, but I've finished all the characters and, and like theory crafting and then testing in game as well. And uh, they all seem to be working pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I've just been working on that, just hanging out with everyone in the community and just uh, somewhat enjoying Delirium, I guess. It's been a bumper <laughs> ride so far, I must say. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go into the the entire to be dissected delirium topic in yeah. just a moment, I suppose. But yeah, that that serves as a quite good introduction, I think. And uh, Balor, what have you been up to? Ooh, uh, so normally, all my normal content, I normally just make build after build. That's like a two x to maybe twenty at most price, and I just keep doing it. Because there's never been a point to invest. This league, I've just been doing stupid amounts of investments and now have hundreds of exalts in the same character. I've been doing the Herald stacking thing because it's way too good and fun. It's so much fun. I hit level 100 on a Wanda by accident and then was like, well, I can't play a level 100 character, so I just made another Scion. It's the same <laughs> class. <laughs> and it's And it's like... 97 now while i'm just like i'm i'm still i feel like i'm only half or a third of the way through my my gearing process and i've nearly i'm gonna end up with two characters to level 100 before i'm even halfway done uh this is quite a departure from my normal budget options on everything so would you say that you're like standing at the top of the mountain but like you're not even halfway up right now yeah, and no, I'm not even. I, it, the character's only worth about 400x, and it's going to be worth 1500. 
Like it's, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's this stuff can get expensive, but I'm really, really enjoying full min maxing into a build and like putting hundreds and hundreds of X into it, as well as a bunch of people from chat who are like, but I can never make a hundred X. And I'm like, yes, you can. And so we've been handholding everyone through making tons and tons of money. And that's been most of my focus. This league has been making a lot of money to get really stupidly overpowered builds and then teaching everyone how to make all of that money. Cause it's really not as hard as it looks. If you've got time to play anyway, which we all do now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's actually probably a, a good start into the whole topic. Uh, I'm just going to quickly uh, catch you all up with what I've been up to. You've probably seen me leak start and die a couple of times on animated weapon characters because I'm really in love with the skill and I knew from the start that with the reworked animated weapon ability, I'd want to, you know, conquer the end game because from previous leaks, I knew that the single target was going to be really really good with not that much of an investment but it, it turns out animate weapon needs a lot more than it needed before in order to become a well-rounded build it, it does do single target reasonably well but it, it seemingly you can never have enough survivability for your for your minions and um not enough movement speed because the clear really depends so badly on movement speed um so now on the current animate weapon build I took a little bit of break and I re-leveled a new character and I'm playing Bane Juggernaut actually because I had all the unique items that are you know budget and good for Bane build the gloves the helmet even the chaos dot multi staff uh, I squeezed in a death solve and um, so far the build has become better than the the necro far better I think even like on the <laughs> You know how good it farms versus how tanky it is. The necro just seems so. I don't know, like a candle in the wind. Sometimes when you make a wrong move, despite you know all the fizz mitigation that you get from a necro, and I think I just have to switch to block. But yeah, the the bane jug's been amazing. The ability to spawn damage scaling clusters anywhere in the tree on the outer large jewel sockets just makes it so fun to play builds that you know start in a different corner of the tree than where you would normally start that particular archetype so for chaos multi on the bottom side it's so fun i'm, I'm weirded out <laughs> yeah You're weirded out yeah <laughs> imagine last league saying i made a bane jug <laughs> actually <laughs> bane like, jug must play hardcore <laughs> bane jug is a thing that i heard first when people were talking about the one of the most popular builds in project pt's all mods league in the you know masochist no loop whatever you want to call it with all the rippy mods activated a lot of people resorted to playing juggernaut on pretty much any ability and that's <laughs> where i first heard bane jug now i wouldn't have ever played it until this league but then this league yeah. i realized you can get unspeakable gifts on the cluster jewels and get chaos explosions you can get a lot of chaos dot multi and you can get at the same time the tankiness of jug so i was i was determined to give it a try and so far it's been holding up pretty well for my ssf expectations anyway i'm sure it's, it's nowhere uh, near your clear speed standard for you trade league boys <laughs> i mean like what type of like maps are you able to even handle on that uh i'm going into red maps now i'm i, okay. I currently only farm tier 10s because uh set up the atlas so that i get more or less infinite beaches and uh, i've been really really scuffed with my rng for um for large cluster jewels item level 75 plus so only after like two or three days of farming today, I got a couple and one of them was chaos damage. But before that, I didn't have a chaos damage large cluster jewel that was higher than 75. This is always really, it's really hard to remember the like hardcore mindset because now that I've been playing softcore for like a year, year and a half, my characters hit level 70, they hit Katava and then they go into tier 14 maps. <laughs> That's what happens. Like I don't, I literally don't have maps below tier 14 shown on my filter. I don't, mm. they, they don't show up. I never need them. <laughs> maps, characters kill Katava, they hit level 70. If I have to go do a little delve, 
to like get it to 70 so I can wear all the gear because of level requirements. I'll do that. And then we're just straight into <laughs> straight into 14s. Yeah, my characters like, are doing breach stones and like yeah. I pretty much did all of my tool breach stones like on my character. I was like, oh, kill Kitava, level 39, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> And then uh, I had to like delve them up a little bit, but then I was like, oh, I'll start doing breach stones. Screw it. <laughs> and I made like five exalts killing breach stones, leveling the character up. And I just kept like, oh, yeah. I have infused the, the charged breach stones. Yeah, it's so weird. I'm glad that you've converted to the like, softcore way, though, the, Baylor. Oh, the longer I play in softcore, the more I feel like hardcore doesn't have a place for me anymore. It's just not. I still. If there's any race event, like if a flashback happens or anything like that, I'm in hardcore for sure. There's zero point in racing in softcore as far as I'm concerned. That's not fun. That's just a who can stay up the longest because it doesn't even matter if you make a mistake. All racing and everything should be in hardcore and I will still go back anytime there's an event. But I can do so much more on softcore. It's so much more fun. Everyone that ever tries out softcore after playing hardcore, they usually stay. Didn't I? I haven't seen or heard too much from DC Lara in a while, but I remember she did the same thing. She was hardcore for years, and then she tried out softcore once, and then she said, "Like I'm not playing anything else in softcore from now on." I think yeah. she went back to hardcore eventually, though. Did she? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. Oh man, then it I just must have missed it. To me, it feels like what I do in hardcore is I grind a lot of easy content to overlevel and overgear, and then I avoid the hardest content in the game. Yeah, that's what I Because said. that's difficult. Be like, it took me like three leagues to start farming Uber Elder because I didn't want to go in there. I, mm -hmm. I can pay someone who won't die to do it for me and then get a cut of those rewards, and that was better. I'm not going to go in there. That was dangerous. Mm-hmm. And... That makes know, it so it special, seems... though, when you finally do it. I can see, especially as a content creator, I can see the perspective of, hey, in softcore, I get to do much more, and I check out the new content much earlier. And there is certainly a lot of merit to that, because you you have a kind of role model, not a role model, but like, uh, you know, people are looking up to you and want to see how the new content is and want to see it from their content creator, right? They, they want to hear your opinion on the stuff. They want to see what build you use for farming that and that stuff. And that kind of falls flat for me because I play hardcore and I take like half the league to even get there. But um, yeah, I feel like as a content creator, like playing in hardcore is very difficult, especially if you are not like a pro racer. You're not stealing uh, it. Takes, <laughs> it takes you a long time to level back up. Like Ziz like rips a lot. But he plays a shit ton compared to the average person. Compared to the average streamer, Ziz plays an insane amount. And his time to get his character back from rip to like being a decent character is so infinitesimally short compared to everybody else that it's not very Fine. big yeah. effect on him. If you're like not a very good uh, leveler or like just have a harder time. Basically as a content creator, a rip means that you no longer control your content because now you're doing a leveling stream or two. Uh, and uh, yeah, leveling streams I don't think are as popular or as like engaging as like doing end game content. And so really, I think that just really hinders you. It really depends. I have actually viewers who ask for leveling streams and who are mm -hmm. hyped when I level a new character because that's what they're excited to see. It really depends. I think there is, with uh, how big the crowd is on Twitch, there is a niche for everything. Probably the large majority of potential viewers wants to see more endgame content than leveling. But like Burger yeah. Brush said, there is a, a huge demand for you know, entry level sort of guides or guidance, not necessarily guide content on YouTube, but also just people watching you do act one, do act two. As long as you explain things, why you make certain decisions and why you level, say, with gem A, even though you're leveling gem B two acts later and then you using gem C for your end game build. And if if you make it sound, I think everything can can be good content. But yeah, uh, I definitely see the the downside of it as well. Yeah, but um, the upside is that the content stays fresh for me. I'm also someone who quickly, or at least I'm very afraid of quickly getting bored or burned out. And I have played softcore leagues before. And while I enjoy them very much in that time, it just, 
for me personally, it becomes a shit fest. I just, so. I just failed to take it as serious as hardcore, and, and and then my motivation also drops to compete. Okay. So that that becomes a fantastic segue. Thank you. Into <laughs> this league might be my favorite ever for the reason of there has not been a reason in the last year for me to invest more than 10 exalts into any build. Every single build I make can do all content in the game for 10 exalts. That's everything over that is just, was just fluff for no reason. Just like growing my EP for no reason. It was not, it was not helpful. I didn't need it. The character could do everything. That is not the case. This league, this league has given me something to push for a drive, an extra, Oh, I really want to put more and more power into the same character. All of these 10 X characters that I've been making for the last year, if I took them, copied them straight into here, they couldn't do a simulacrum. Like that's not that, that didn't, that content didn't exist. Like, am I completing them easy now? Sure. But I've done, I've put three or 400 X into the character to do it. And now it's easy content, but it wasn't like compared to, compared to any other league in the last few years, there is so, so much more defense needed and so much more damage needed. And just a whole lot of thinking that has to happen. I now need layers of defense. Um, insert joke here about how I'm now playing a Herald stacker, which just mitigates <laughs> everything, but, but, but we've done other things as well. And it just, I'm just incredibly, incredibly happy with this league because of how much it's let me feel like I'm not wasting my time when I invest more money into it. Like, yeah, I just, I would totally I, agree with that. Yeah. I feel like this is also one of the few leagues where, uh, every level matters. Like normally most of my builds kind of plateau at like 92, 93, 94, but now yeah. I'm like, Hmm, maybe like leveling up to 100, not just to be like, I did it, but to be like, to finish like, right I want there, that dude. passive point. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I'm I need that. At right, I'm looking at it right now. I'm just like, dang, if I got uh, one more point on this dude, I would get another 600,000 DPS just from like changing the routing on my uh, yeah. split personalities. Uh, or ooh, I could potentially, if I had a couple more levels, uh, change my anointment to something different. And it's just like, oh my God, like, why am I considering leveling up a character to like this high a level? It's something I never do. But I totally agree with the, yeah. like, you don't need a ton of stuff. Like I've intentionally left my champion at day three level of gear. Right now, it still has day three level gear. And like, I used to like, that's what I would kill a uh, Cirrus on for my boss service thing. I'd be like, yep, this is the same gear I had at Monday of League Start. Uh, so it's, you don't need a ton of investment, but this league, I definitely feel like if you want to do like the high, high tier content, like you definitely do a lot more. Yeah. I've kind of done the same thing. Like you ever had the league as well, just 10 X kill all the content and then you don't need to push more. But just as I say, this league, you need more to do everything. But for some reason, I'm still lazy and I still just invested 10 X. Mm -hmm. I can do all content and I've done like tier 16, 100% delirious maps. But like you say, if you really want to do it good, then you need to invest more. So like I've invested 10, 15 X into my character. I can do a tier 16, 100% delirious map, but it takes me 35 minutes to do the damn thing as well. <laughs> <laughs> like it takes forever to do it. Everyone is like, why are you doing this so slow? I'm like, well, I didn't invest more than 15 X. Like, dude, this is taking you 30 minutes to do this shit that I can do in 10 minutes. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't know, man. I'm lazy. I don't feel like investing more. But just like you say, every other league, it's like invest X amount and you can clear everything. And then you do kind of get bored and you're like, why would I want to invest more? There's no reason to do it. Yeah, so, that's yeah. it. That's it. And that's also why I've, well, one of the biggest reasons I've never bothered to get a headhunter since Incursion. Incursion was the first time I bothered to get to level 100. And I did that in hardcore. And if you're going to grind to 100, you might as well have a headhunter. Because mm -hmm. that just makes stuff easier. I have not even considered wanting one since then. Never bothered. But the, there's no point. There's just, there hasn't been a point. Like, what am I going to do with the headhunter? Yeah, yeah, so that's all this league mechanic. Like, I was like, this is a headhunter league. I need one the first weekend before yeah. they go to astronomical prices. 
And uh, oh. those voices, gem jewels look uh, pretty uh, pretty good. Maybe I'm... I should pick up one or two of those. Those will probably be a um, multi exalt jewel. <laughs> I reckon those. I reckon those voices are what's keeping the the headhunter price down. Uh, maybe Just purely based on prestige, the voices are harder to get and more expensive, so people are less oh, focused no, I, on the headhunter because I you don't, don't need it. It's as far as my herald build is concerned, which is like sixty percent of the population of softcore. By the way, mm. as far as my herald build is concerned. I can't drop one of my three voices. I would happily rather drop my headhunter than any of those. Mm. The voices are way more power than the headhunter. Way more. Are yours three or fives or ones? There are, there are only fives and they're still way more. <laughs> the, the headhunter is a fraction of the power of one of my five socket voices. Like I, I It's just not three. as important. I dropped a three slack of voice on like the second day of the league and my teammate was like, Oh, we could probably get eight exalts for that. I'm like, I'm going to keep this for my build. <laughs> yeah. No, good choice. Good choice. <laughs> and, and then it was like, went up to 12. He's like, we could sell that. I'm like, it's going to go way up. <laughs> it's going like, to go now way it's up. what? 160 or something. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's actually ridiculous. It's like, what? I'm pretty sure you can't sell a headhunter and buy a three socket. I heard though that everything else that is not going into Herald stacking builds is surprisingly cheap this league. They're 180. Ooh. One okay, 80. they're going up still. I need uh, three of those. <laughs> yeah, so everything that's not Herald stuff is super duper cheap, which is wonderful. Like right now, I just bought a savior for seven and a half exalts. Uh, yeah. I think it was seven and a half. Yeah, also any but six like, link that is not shafts, right? Uh, yeah, like there's tons of stuff that's super duper cheap. Like it makes me very happy because there's a lot of very powerful builds out there right now that you can get to play that aren't yep. uh, playing with Harold and the boys. And you can do like a, a hundred exalt build for like ten exalts this league because yep. they're like, I need to sell everything. <laughs> like, like here's the here's the thing about that. The Harold build okay is busted definitely right, and and I'm enjoying playing it, but I'm. 100 no one who's playing it right now is like yeah this should stay in the game like that's <laughs> not right so that's that's just off the table we're, we're losing the herald build at the end of the league everyone mm. is agreeing with that that's fine but if it wasn't for the herald build i'm telling everyone and i keep saying it and people keep not listening archmage is stronger like pound for pound archmage brands Gives you way more bang for your buck and is way, way, way more OP than the Herald stacking in all of the low budget and media budget options. It's not until you get to like 400x invested that Herald pulls way in front and does everything. But Archmage is flying under the radar because of Heralds. And if Archmage Stormbrand manages to not get a significant nerf because everyone's focus is on the Heralds, that is going to be by tenfold the strongest build that exists next week. Mm, have you played Hollow Palm? <sighs> Hollow Palm no, has to be but hands I've down the most some ridiculous leveling ever had. So, like leveling, right? yes, but then but... It, it just it just scales. It just keeps going. It's okay, like so this rock. It's like this leveling. Here's the part where you're going to hate me, though. Okay, <laughs> to do Hollow Palm. You have to play melee, and I don't care if you do 200 billion damage as a cyclone build, you mm. still can't do a map in a in four times the time it takes to do on brands. That's true. Because it's just, you have to reach everything. It doesn't matter how much more damage you do, you have to go there, and I don't. I clear mm. everything that's loaded in on a brand character, including off-screen in every direction until just play, uh, it stops place. loading mobs. <laughs> But even Frostblade, you can't attack something that's not on your screen. Where is the chains off screen? So you can't play even, with but, Hollow Palm. Yeah, you can't do that with Hollow Palm. But I also, if there's ah. nothing on your screen, you don't kill something. If there's nothing on my brand screen, it doesn't matter. If there's one and a half screens loaded up, one and a half screens loaded right and left and down, I kill all those mobs on Stormbrand. All of them. They die. The bosses jump out in tier 16, 17, 100% delirious maps. The 
bosses like Kasosis or however you say it, <laughs> jumps out on the brand character and then dies before I manage to get him on the screen. You see the, the boss symbol appear on the map and then you run off towards him and he's dead before you get there. Like, it's not... He doesn't have a chance to kill you. Uh, like, what's I just, the best skill for Hollow Palm? Just curious asking because yeah, Frostbite doesn't work. Cyclone seems like the obvious choice, but like Valve Cyclone's are really, really good in terms of damage. Uh, probably Tectonic Slam would be the other option, but that's like elemental, so you can't do Impale. Like oddly yeah. enough, uh, I've looked at like some other people's builds where they're like doing Tectonic Slam, and I've just like slapped Tectonic Slam into my build with Impale, and I'm doing more damage than they are, and I'm like. Uh, half of this is going to fire damage. Yeah, impale Berk. Impale is ridiculous. I mean, but I also have eight impale stacks. So as a berserker, so <laughs> with without a watcher's eye. That's the thing. Why impale is so eye? strong, man. What? Why don't you have a watcher's eye? You could have ten stacks. Uh, I'm broke. <laughs> broke. <laughs> <laughs> it would cost me dexterity, dude. What did you want to say about uh, Impale Burger? No, I was just going to say Impale is so strong. Like I said, like for someone who hasn't really made a lot of builds before, and I'm not really a, like a smart person in that sense that I can make builds, but every time I try to make a build, whatever I can come up with, like you said, Don, like I've, I've, I'm trying to make a build out of every Ascendancy, and I'm looking at Chieftain and all this fire damage, and I'm like, but Impale is just 20 times stronger than anything I try to do. Anything I try to come up with, Impale is just always ahead. I can, it's like, I can why, why would I want to that. do anything unless I just do Impale? Because I know Chieftain's a, a hidden spellcaster ascendancy. <laughs> yeah, you don't and, go melee with it, you cast. Yeah, and I just can't get it to work. Like, I've never played a Chieftain, especially not since the changes to the ascendancy and everything. And I'm like, nah, man, I can't get it to work. I always end up with, like, going some form of Impale some other way. So, yeah, yeah. so I just checked on Impale Watchers. That would actually be a damage loss for me. <laughs> Fucking all of them. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, what? So How is that be, possible? So it'd be replacing a split personality, and and that's so the split personality is just worth more than two impale stacks at this point. So, so I take out split personality, lose eighty eight dexterity and one hundred and seventy nine total life, and it's giving me one point three million DPS. So yeah, I have a lot of percent attributes though. So. Like, I made a belt. How much that, decks do you uh, have in your hollow palm? I have 1672 right now. Oh, so I made a. MB Extreme I, tweeted he, he broke the 2K the other day. Yeah, but he has like one Rich. quarter the damage I do. <laughs> <laughs> but he's doing fire stuff. We'll see. He has a really good uh, brutal restraint. He can maybe do something amazing with that. But like, I made a. a insane belt i tweeted about this it was like it has 69 dexterity 14 percent all attributes it also has 46 strength and then it has tier one life percent damage and energy shield and so somebody like that like you can't even buy anything like that at all and then add to that also you can make like percent attributes and dexterity and attributes necklace and the only thing I'm missing compared to uh, MB's is that he's got damage per dexterity. Uh, and mine has more attributes. But it's just like, you, you can craft you some insane an, stuff this league. You made a very interesting choice with your chest piece. Yeah, it's, Because you it's, can get 3% less dex than that. Mm -hmm. And actually, like, woke orb something into it, get an explodey chest or something. Like, you can get 12% instead of 15 the so one damage per dex on that chest added up to almost nothing when I changed it out to something else. It was only the percent that was more yeah. important. So the damage per dexterity is actually like 111% increased damage, yeah. which like doesn't seem like it's all that crazy, but Hollow Palm gives you this like literal titanic destroying iceberg worth of flat physical damage, but you have very little percentage damage. And so the more percentage damage you can kind of get into your build, the like crazier it becomes. And so like, we were, I was helping someone make one and I was like, I don't know how to make these. This is melee. I don't play melee. I know what I'll do. I'll type <laughs> on the crown into, into, <laughs> into, into um, path of building and we'll see what he's doing. 
And I was like, I like everything except this chess piece. And I was like, we're going to make a chess piece. And so I made one, or I had the person I was helping make one. They woke orbed one together. It failed. It bricked. It was shit. It was just explodian percent attribute. We did some beast crafting around and ended up with like a really good chest in the end that's worth like 80x or something. And I, I was like, great. And then I slotted it into your build and we lost like 400,000 damage. And I was like, that is nothing. We just gained enemies explode. Fuck, we're keeping this chest. Yeah. Like enemies explode is OP. So if I had like uh, percent dexterity, percent attributes, and essence dexterity on top of that, which would be almost impossible to get, yeah. uh, still lose 10% damage. So. Yeah, but explode. So I think explode's kind of like overrated on a melee build. Do you not no. die to quilts? No, not anymore. Uh, what? I have so why is it overrated on a melee build? Uh, I have 31,000 armor. And uh, if I okay. pop molten shell, I have about another 7,000 HP. <laughs> and if I pop uh, vol molten shell, I can tank basically anything in Uber Elder. Uh, I can tank the like Elder dies uh, to me, exile explosion as well without my HP almost even moving at all. And so <laughs> I just have an insane amount of physical mitigation when I have it up. So it's like, oh, I have my flasks up all the time, giving me an insane amount of armor. Oh, there's quills. Click molten shell, and then I just go into them. They all explode. Nothing happens. And exploding chest, that's the only thing that really does for it, is it gets rid of the porcupines, which are a big I mean, problem. it also doubles your clear. No, it doesn't. Because uh, unlike a lot of like spell-based builds where you're actually scaling like physical damage or like my... Oh, uh, yours is all flat. Yeah, so it's all flat damage for the most part. And uh, or melee damage or attack damage, you're not actually yeah. going to be scaling explodes all that much. Whereas, like, if you compare that to my Blade Vortex character, where I'm converting 90% of yeah. my physical damage to fire, and then I'm scaling the ever loving crap out of crit, out of uh, elemental. And so, like, I touch one thing with my Blade Vortex and it just goes <gasps> and kills yeah. everything like two screens away, it just Bingo like chains stuff. away. Uh, melee doesn't never do that. It like a few things pop, they take like three percent of their HP, and that's it. And so it's it's really dumb. I would agree with you, Don. Like I played so much melee as well. I started playing melee after when I came back to PV again in three point five. Thanks to you, I just started mm -hmm. doing a bunch of melee shit, and I never looked back. And I agree, like exploded chests can be nice and everything, but I don't really look at it, something that's necessary even for clearing anything like that it doesn't feel as good as it does on other builds when you have something like that and i mean like if you play like you and me play a lot of cyclone as well and if you play cyclone you basically have to go up and touch the mob anyway and then you're already at the pack and you might as well just finish off the rest really quickly because you're already there anyway so it doesn't really feel that good to have an exploded chest obviously a lot of people want it and 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 to a lot of people it feels good but to me, I don't know. I just don't feel like it's really necessary. I'd rather go for just more damage or whatever in that sense. I think it has to do with what you said with the predominance of, of impaled scaling. Is that, that kind of build just does benefit very little and does not really scale the explosions. But if you were to play one of these out-of-favor, full yeah. elemental conversion melee builds, it would still be kind of good. But that, that's yeah, for just sure. very, very much. Uh, uh, I don't even think so, because it like so the, the reason why exploded chest is good for melee is because porcupines are really deadly to you. But yeah, if, you're playing, you, you if you're playing, if you're playing any non impale melee build, you're playing crit first off because non crit is pretty shit for the most part, unless you're hollow palm. Uh, it's the only non crit build I've done like almost ever where I'm like, wow, I don't feel like a potato. Uh, and so <laughs> if you if you're critting. And you have even the tiniest or... amount of cold damage, like even one yeah, cold you damage, everything. you shatter everything. You don't need to actually technically freeze it as long as you kill it with a crit that has any cold damage. So I've tested this with like one cold damage to hits, you shatter. And so porcupines just and they're gone. So you don't you definitely don't need exploding chest with elemental. I'd say you need it even less. Uh, it definitely for, for technically clear, needs to be more than one. Move, but... It and technically like... needs to be more than one, but what happens is because the freeze calculation... Basically, you can do a freeze that's so weak that you can't even notice the, 
mob being frozen even if you were watching it frame by frame mm. it's like it's just such a weak freeze that it doesn't affect anything but it doesn't matter if that's the kill hit because you don't need a length of that freeze you don't need it to be effective you just need to shatter that's all just get rid of the corpse mm-hmm <laughs> And I noticed yeah. this a lot, like when I was uh, like on my champion, I got headhunter, so I took off brutality just to stack it a little bit better. And I was like, "Oh, yeah. everything's shattering now all the time." I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> I feel uh, like uh, yeah, please. But uh, I feel like melee is probably my biggest blind spot in all of Poe. I just I can't stand playing it. <laughs> I feel like you played Cyclone objectively and Legion five times. Okay, no, once, and and that was enough. But it's, I feel like I look at it, and every time I look at it, I'm like, objectively, melee isn't really nearly as bad as everyone puts it out to be. Like it does pretty good damage if you know how to do it right. It's got a mm. very very high ceiling. But so I don't know, it's just in, until Harold yeah. came down the street, uh, like some yeah. high stacking. Now Harold's just crazy, absolute crazy. Well, Her- Harold is dumb now, like that's that's broken, but that's okay, that's gone soon. But it's just that I don't know, I just don't like having to reach things before I kill mm-hmm. them. Like, that's oh, uh, that's just it. I just don't like having to go there. <laughs> that's I just want to, I just want to kill everything from, from back here. <laughs> Fair enough. Weekly, yep. uh, we're in the middle of a, a global situation that I heard is be- best not to mention on YouTube videos if you don't want problems with the uh, with the uh, algorithm. That, that CV. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in in as a consequence of that situation, uh, this leak start was actually the one with the highest player number, and we're also assuming that we have the highest retention because everyone's staying at home and everyone has a lot more time to play video games for better or for worse um do you guys feel as all of you are playing in softcore trade league do you feel that the league has been staying alive longer do you feel that you can definitely see how a life trade is and everything considering that we're we're six weeks in right normally i would definitely feel like trades down. popping off a little bit but that for the most part uh people are also like taking their characters to like a higher like ceiling Mm-hmm. overall like uh, as someone who like historically does a lot of bossing granted i've like raised my price to so i can actually do my own content but uh it definitely feels like there's a lot more people who are like able to like go out and kill serious aid or kill uber elder compared to the average league which is uh, really cool i feel like cluster jewels have added a lot to a lot of different builds and uh it's not really even a power creep at this point it's like the power uh escalator is just taken <laughs> off at this point <laughs> I feel like I don't know how to attribute how much is to everyone stay at home and how much is to this league is really, really rewarding investing in a character and staying longer, and that's keeping people engaged more. Yeah, because there's a lot of games people can play, like Valorant, for example, yeah. is popping off right now. And Yeah, like, I don't know if a stay-at-home order is going to make everyone play PoE for the full three months. Like, that's not a real... <laughs> Like you would just, you would still get bored at the same rate and just go play other games instead. But I'm sure some of it is because of that. People just have more time, but I, I feel like a large amount of it has to be attributed to like the league being just absolutely fantastic. Like it is one of the biggest things that's been happening this league is I quite often do like serious carries and stuff. And this entire league, from the word go, I've been going, you shouldn't need a Cirrus carry. Every time I do it, I'm like, do this yourself next time. Figure it out. Every mm-hmm. time, every time, every single time. And over the course of the last, like, two weeks, all the people who have been regularly coming to me, like, almost all of the people who have been regularly coming to me two or three times a day have been linking me stuff from their Cirrus 8 kills. And I'm like, yes, people are doing it now. Like, they're getting there. They're gearing their characters out enough, and then they're practicing, and then they're going, and they're killing spirits. And I don't know, I, I guess I just, I just really like 
that everyone is still investing way more and getting further. Same thing has kind of been happening to me. A lot of people come and ask me for kills, and I'm like, try, try it yourself. Three portals. If you need me to come help the last three, I can do it. But get the practice in. And for the first weeks, it was every day. Kill my series, kill my series, kill my series. And now there's a couple of people, but most of the people just come in and like, I just killed my own first Awakening 6 series. I'm so happy. I'm like, yeah, you're going to kill 7, and you're going to kill 8 as well. And a lot of people come back, and they're like, I just killed my 8 the first time, and they're super happy. And I feel as well like, yeah, it's good. Push harder and, and you're going to feel that the rewards are there and you're going to feel the satisfaction of taking that extra step as well. But all the playtime this league, I feel like a lot of people burned out even faster though. They are playing a ton more. And because they're playing so much more as well, a lot of people in my channel who usually play for like a month, some of them burn out after two, three weeks, even with the health stack. And they were like, well, I've been playing non-stop every single day because i'm home and they're like i'm just so bored of it so fast but yeah mo most of the people i would say i agree with uh their player retention has been uh, pretty good this league and i see a lot of people that are staying on but for a few people here, here and there i think they burn out way too faster because of the amount of play time that has uh, risen as well for people it'd be interesting to see stats on that i definitely feel yeah. like it, there's some people that see the Herald stacking and they're like, well, I can never afford a 180 Exalt, uh, three voices, so I might as well not play. And then other people see like, holy crap, I can just corrupt jewels and if I get minus mana reservation, uh, I can pretty much fund half of my build. Holy crap. Yep. Uh, <laughs> like, and, and it's also been motivation for people to be like, okay, I want to play this build. I've never had more than 20x in my bank in a league ever. How do I suddenly make 150x needed to start the build out comfortably? Yep, totally. And so people are like learning those things now. Like the, I put on YouTube, shameless self promotion, mm -hmm. um, a full explanation of like how to maintain tier 14 burials indefinitely and over return them, and then also have tier 15s in abundance to mass sell, and how at this point in the league. If you've got eight hours a day, you can farm a headhunter in like four days with no mm -hmm. crafting, no trading, no bullshit, like not playing the game stuff, just infinite sustain on your own Atlas, just running. And that video blew up way more than anything else does. Like people just want to know how to make money. That's, and then go play their fun builds. People are looking into that now when they didn't before. Oh yeah. And there's like tons of even simple stuff you can do to make tons of cash. And it's just like, especially because Harold is just like raising the price of everything that's related with this build. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anything that you can get that is like, for example, like Conqueror's Efficiency. I did a video about this where it's just like, if you haven't gone and grabbed your Those are in X tools, now, by the way. Uh, no, just the, the uncorrupted ones are in X. What? There's, I'm seeing 60 chaos right now. Yeah, I've messaged them. None of them are returning? Because I tried to buy, I wanted to buy 60 of them. Mm -hmm. The first people that reply are at an X. Okay. So, yeah, it sounds like every <laughs> single character you level up is a free exalt, then. It's a free exalt. <laughs> or, if you're me, it's a Varlorb that turns into a shitty Radjul. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> that sounds That's like uh, sounds like race practice in softcore is actually worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every time you do a race practice run, you've made an X. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah, in the light of uh, of currency being so easy to generate, things being really, really cheap, unless they're for the Herald build, and us getting all this power from the cluster jewels, let us quickly talk about the underdogs, the things that are not Herald builds. We've mentioned the Hollow Palm, and we mentioned the Art Mage as an insanely powerful tool, which is not... Does Art Mage need specific cluster jewels? Just the, the Storm brand, the, the brand's jewels, right? Not even that. Does, does what? Sorry, I missed that. Does Art Mage require specific jewels? The question I wanted to segue <laughs> yeah, in is... Yeah, even mines. Yeah, no, no, I mean cluster <laughs> jewels. No. Uh, the question I wanted to segue into is what what is the the underdogs in in the cluster jewel world, right? Like what's super strong? One thing that I heard, for example, was that the Warcry uh, stacking 
is pretty mm -hmm. underrated and uh, in Orphan the shadow of the Herald stuff because you can get permanent enduring cry and rallying cry apparently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Permanent enduring, permanent rallying cry, and then like fifty second uptime berserks if you're if you want to. Like that's what my hollow palm character does. It's like one of the few times I like I feel comfortable checking berserk in POB and like still having a high rage count. Like. I can phase Cirrus but without dropping below 45 uh, rage, except the you know, last phase. Uh, and it's just like, and I have Berserk up. And I have rage. It's insane. Like, normally Berserker, it's like, you feel so neutered fighting Cirrus because you're like, well, I would really love to have rage right about <laughs> yeah, now. But, uh, <laughs> I, feel that, uh, I guess I'm back to zero because I'm <laughs> mad at this guy. And uh, instead, now you're like, I'm full of rage. I'm ready to kill every single phase. And he's berserk. He's full uptime berserk. You can shout and spin. It's just, it's so nice. I think that's uh, really insane. I think the underdogs for these cluster jewels are literally everything you haven't heard of yet. These are all the ones that people have been playing, but like, there are cluster jewels make enemies take 5% more damage a curse on them. There are, you can be just doing a curse build. There are cluster jewels that make things that you attack with wands explode. There are cluster jewels that make... There are cluster jewels that do nearly goddamn everything. If your build isn't using cluster jewels, it's probably wrong. I'm... Sure, there's got to be a build somewhere that like would be better to not have cluster jewels in, but I can't think of it. Um, yeah, there's definitely some builds that are like that. Like I've definitely seen some like, 200 one, million right? DPS builds that don't have cluster jewels, and I'm like, well, okay. But like, you're like, probably doing a good enough job at 200 <laughs> mil. But like, I most of say. them should have cluster jewels. There's definitely going to be some like it's, it's you can't say literally every build is going to need these things, because there will always be exceptions. But it probably, unless you already know you're the exception, like if you hear, you should be using cluster jewels, and you think, hmm, I wonder if I should. The answer is yes, you should be. You're, yeah, you're, you're I already like another thing that's kind of like under the radar <laughs> is just the fact that like they nerfed Headhunter by making it so that uh, Temporal chains like is a lot less effective, basically. Yeah, but and then, curse effect is so easy to get now. Yeah, and so like, I mean, it's not that easy, but like, if you put like five clusters worth of curse effect with like a three voices, yeah. uh, you get like also you can get that uh, damage when you curse things uh, mod as you go there, so you get more flat like spool up damage, basically, and it's yep. just like it's really nice. And I was like, Dag, this is actually making my elemental weakness and flammability make it so that when I curse an enemy, which is when I hit an enemy, they take 179% more fire damage. <laughs> oh, <Yep>. baby. <laughs> and it's just dumb. That, that, I think that's one of the big reasons why, like, when I kill something, it just chains out. And it's uh, actually ridiculous. Yeah. My damn clusters. What about you, Burger? You find any uh, interesting builds as you're going through all the different ascendancies? No, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like I said, I'm just doing like things that you can use as a leak starter and that you can push heavier into later on. But I haven't really tried out like any of the crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't really feel like I want to try out the crazy stuff. And when I talk to a lot of people in the channel, like I said, there's a lot of newcomers in my channel, always have been, and even this league even more. And they, they don't even understand a tenth of the game yet. And I don't really want to start pushing anything that crazy onto them. So I'm just making builds that are easy to understand, easy to play, can do all content without investing too much and that, that are strong overall. But I, I mean, like, I see a ton of stuff from everyone, all the creators and on Twitch and on YouTube. and. People in my channel do all kinds of crazy stuff. Like, I think it was a week before everyone started playing the War Cry. I think I saw a picture. It wasn't even on Reddit. It was somewhere else in a Discord or something. Someone just posted a picture of like, oh, this is what you can do with War Cry. And I immediately thought like, 
any day now, someone is going to make a Warcry build and it's going to be insane. And then all of a sudden, a week later, all these Warcry builds started showing up. And in the beginning of the league, people didn't really even figure out all the Herald stuff. It took, I don't know, there was some guy who made this crazy video about it. And then that just popped off. So like I say, there's probably a bunch of stuff that is about to come out that people just didn't realize at first that is going to be insane as well. Someone just got to figure it out. And it's going to, probably going to happen sooner or later, you know? Well, the reason why Harold didn't really pop off right away is because uh, it was all so of the... stupidly OP that people knew it was going to get nerfed, so they wanted to keep it to themselves. That <laughs> it doesn't get nerfed. No, completely wrong. Uh, so the reason why it didn't pop off is because negative auras from Delirium were also counted as auras and multiplied against you. Mm-hmm. And so, like any of the slowing effects of Delirium, if they touched you, your character stopped and wouldn't move again for like up to ten seconds. And that stuff was insane early on as well. Yeah, and so there's a lot of things like that, or like any of the minus flask or minus regen or all the other stuff, like pretty much just instant gutted your character. Mm. And so like it's really hard to have like this character that's like their main defense is like you're just regenerating a ton of energy shield, and then like one random delirium monster touches you, and all of those debuffs were lasting a long time, very prevalent at the beginning of the league. Uh, if they touch you, it's just like, and your defenses are off, and yeah. you now can't move. Like, and it's not like you can't, you can cast spells. It's like your character's literally animation locked and frozen, <laughs> like a statue. And it's just like, well, I hope everything dies around me. There's a pair of boots for that. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> there's other issues there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's definitely, that's definitely. The unintended interaction that kept it from popping off after people disclosed how strong it was but i've definitely seen someone on reddit taking pride in the fact that he was one of the first people to figure it out and and you said you tried to keep it under the blankets tried to not let it get out because he knew how broken it was always some people i mean it always gets out in the end right but it's always some people who are early on the train and who want to like with back in the day with the crafting meta right People it's always like out. someone's going to claim that as well. So mm. but I always assume that people are going to try to, uh, like, and you're going to try to, like, oh, this is really powerful. Let me go and corner this and do a lot with it. And then, like, this happens to me a lot, like, with the, the beginning of the league. I'm like, ooh, like, this new league mechanic can make a lot of money with it. Like, let's buy it all and do it. And, uh, yeah, like people like uh, it. It makes less sense to like share it actively. Be like, hey, Reddit, oh, unless you're like trying to seek that out. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So other note noteworthy things, definitely. I think the outside of the herald stacking itself on the herald jewels, you can get uh, additional sentinels of purity and additional virulent stacks for herald of agony. And in the beginning, when similar to what you guys said about the curse effect reduction where temporal chains self-cursing wasn't as strong anymore, but now you have a lot more access to curse effect scaling, they nerfed the Herald of Agony, gave it less stats per virulence, but in the end, it comes out stronger because you can invest more into getting additional virulence stacks. So uh, I think that stuff is also pretty juicy. I think the Herald of Purity more so than uh, the Herald of Agony, though, because you, getting one additional... Sentinels are yeah. disgusting. <laughs> and also, there's a, isn't there a notable that gives you fist reduction per Sentinel? I have no idea. I haven't played with minions since I started mm-hmm. Animate Weapon and hated it. No idea. Pretty sure someone told me about that. That's pretty ridiculous. Because as a Necro, you already get up to 10% fizz reduction per minion. Like, based on how many minions you have, like 1% fizz reduction per nearby minion, up to 10. And uh, obviously, you can get some other sources of that stat. Yeah, I just feel like, like I don't really want to play minions. Like, I've never really enjoyed it, but also, like, kind of blatantly just created the situation. Oh, I'm lagging. Where uh, people don't want to see minions. Oh, is that so? Not realize um you you've completely uh quick interjection you've been completely skipping blight league right you were at world of warcraft at the time 
Uh, yeah, so I just, like, my Discord totally froze up there, so I missed whatever just happened there. But, uh, yeah, I totally mm. missed Blight League. I feel like Blight League, like, minions were so popular, and everybody was playing minions. And then now people are like, oh, minion build? Really, dude? Come on, bro. I want to see anything <laughs> else. And it's kind of like, it was like almost a little bit like uh, Legion League, like Cyclone was so popular that, like, if you're playing a Cyclone build after that, people are like, really, Cyclone? Come on, like, bro. <laughs> And it's that, still really good. The U would have gone really well because you were like, but I was already playing Cyclone before and no one got bored of it. And then everyone else jumps on Cyclone. And then you're, and then you're lumped into the, ah, look at him playing that meta build that everyone else is playing. You're like, this is my build. In, in, I was until always doing Cyclone. Cyclone. It was pretty bad. <laughs> I didn't really play it all that much. It, it was more like, uh, hey, I managed to kill Uber Elder with this crap to your skill that like locks you in. <laughs> And now it's like, oh, it's the best. Yeah. Cyclone's like Cyclone the Cyclone only Cyclone. melee that I enjoy playing. And it's just, it's so insane. Like, it's, it's Cyclone's like here in terms of like, it's got damage, it's got movement, it's got, uh, it just feels so good quality of life. And then like every other mm-hmm. melee skills down here at best. And then some of them are like way down here. It feels so bad whenever you try to play anything else but Cyclone because you're like, I could just be playing Cyclone right now and it would feel 10 times better. I'm trying to play all these skills. Like I've been toying around with so much, but in the end, I'm like, why, why am I not just playing Cyclone? It's just so stupidly good compared to everything else. When you, when you look at like melee, yeah, like I say, the, the movement aspect alone is insane. Dodging everything in the game. And also just like the, uh, the gems that you support it with. It's like, all right, so I'm going to do dual strike. Well, then I need ancestral call. I need melee splash. Mm-hmm. I need multi strike. All of those reduce my damage. So I get two damage <laughs> gems. Cyclone, it's like damage, 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 damage. I got all the damage. Yeah. Oh, I don't need all that damage. Let's take one out, put awaken increased area effect or pulverize in there. Oh, that still yeah. gives me damage, though. Uh- <laughs> exactly like that. Yeah. I, just, I just tried playing double strike. Maybe a week ago, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is so bad!" I have to add so many things to make it any viable at all for map clearing, and then I have mm. to swap out like half of the gems for it to be good on single target. Even though double strike is strong overall, but like you say, you need special call, you need this and that, and it's, it was just awful, man. It was clunky and weird, and just didn't feel good at all. And then you play cycling, and you're like, "Man, this is heaven." Even like infused channeling is like supposed to be like, "Oh, this is like a defensive gem." But it just mm-hmm. hands you a bunch of damage. And now like, with rapid infusion uh, cluster node <laughs> mobile gives you 5% movement speed and 5% more damage. Uh, thank you, GGG. <laughs> and yep. and with all the cluster jewels as well now, that like all these channeling ones are insane as well on top of Cyclone. I'm like, so looking at them, oh, I'm yeah. like, wait, so we get this and we get that and, and I can get this as well? Hex like I can get all this damage. Endurance and charge every second yeah. while channeling. Block while channeling. Like the endurance charges, for example. Like, oh, here I am, free free endurance charges all the time. I just have to hold down my right click and I just have full endurance charges all the time. On a build that I didn't use to have endurance charges on this easy. And now I just have them all the time. Along I'm with all the damage in the world. considering running one of them on my Bane Jug just for when I blight. <laughs> so that I get more, uh, you know, when I single target down things with the blight, I get endurance charges sustained without being hit. And, Which uh, means the insane thing is precise focus gives you a fifty percent critical strike chance while you're channeling and thirty percent crit multi while you're channeling. Oh, when you've been yes. channeling for at least a second, so it's like that's only good for cyclone. Like, yeah, exactly. It's like if you're blade flurrying, you are technically not channeling when you have released your blade flurry, and you and you definitely haven't been channeling for a full second no, as your blade flurry. Yeah, and so exactly. it's just like. Even Divine Iron, you're like, boop, boop, boop. It's Cyclone's like, I'm just getting so much freaking damage from this cluster jewel, don't mind me. Uh, maybe, maybe some sort of wonky cast while channeling setup where you have like a lightning warp in there so you don't have to stop channel in order to move. But other than that, Cyclone is the only channeling skill that allows you to move while you're channeling. So I, mm-hmm. I looked at every other channeling skill in the game and I'm like, it feels like they made these cluster jewels just for Cyclone. Yeah, it feels like when you look at it and when you play it, it's like these are just made for Cyclone. Even like uh, Cyclone's bastard cousin, uh, 
charge dash isn't all that great. Like I say charge dash is like totally F tier skill until you add a savior to it, which allows you to like actually have clear. Cause they normally it's like, all right, I'm going to like kill everything in this little line over here. And then I'm going to go over here and kill everything over there. And then I'm going to go back around over here. I'm going to kill the stuff. And it's like their saver bros are like, you know, I got left. You got right. All right. You get the middle. All right. Uh, <laughs> And it's, it just works, and it's just like, oh my god, why can't it be like this all the time? I've used Charge Dash to great success to gain Fortify on staff caster builds until mm. you get the Vigilant Strike Threshold Jewel. That's that's what Charge Dash is good for, because you can just tap it real quick without like channeling duration while you're standing mm. in the middle of a pack, and you hit all the monsters in the pack with the AoE attack, and even with bad accuracy, you will get Fortify. No problem. So you're inside a pack of monsters without fortify. Well, <laughs> and, and then attacking yes. and not doing your damage spell. <laughs> Munka S. Well, yeah. brand recall is instant. You don't really Munka. need to. You walk into the pack, you brand recall, and and you know insta charge dash at the same time, basically. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's not something that I would rest uh, recommend without restrictions. Just until you get your threshold jewel for vigilant strike which is 10 times better because staffs have, staff staffs have a long range so you can just mm. hit but uh speaking about the challenge jewels uh, the one hexbreaker i feel like is pretty popular it's the one that like while you're channeling you're immune to curses i think that yep. actually needs kind of a little bit of a buff because there's lots of times like if you're playing anything with cyclone if you're moving obviously you're not channeling anymore uh, and even with Cyclone, like lots of times you want to leap slam and then it's like, and I'm suddenly cursed as I'm leap slamming. So like, it's, it's, I'd say it's really good on Cyclone, but everything else it's pretty crap for. So like, I almost wish it said you're immune to curses if you've channeled recently. And that would make it like go from being like, well, this is good for Cyclone. Not really great for everything else. To being like, dang, I need to get this into my build. Uh, and yeah. Also, yeah, good point. has anybody used any of the keystones besides Hollow Palm, or one with nothing, or I'm Hollow Palm currently thing? using a keystone that is Sleeper OP. Now that you mention it, mm -hmm. which would be which one? Um, uh, you on, just might the stream and just tell the rest of us quickly. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is Secrets of Suffering, and I'll tell you why it's Sleeper OP. One, I need mana reservation on every jewel. Mana reservation on these jewels, 2x, nothing. Uh, what this does is it makes it so that you cannot ignite, chill, freeze, or shock. But as someone wearing two quality Calls of Brotherhoods, like, you know, 70% of the builds that a Herald stacking are doing, uh, I really only have a notable freeze because pretty much everything is um, cold, right? Like, so the, mm -hmm. the freezes are huge, but we also like kill everything instantly. So the freezes are irrelevant. What you gain instead of freeze is up to 15% critical strike chance, which is going to be 15. And that's flat 15 critical strike chance on top of everything you're already doing. What you lose is all of the calculations done for <laughs> shock, chill, freeze, and ignite. And what you lose is 80% of the lag in your instance. It's pretty OP. <laughs> yeah. So it is proper sleeper OP for the pure reason of getting rid of all of those calculations and making my gameplay just buttery smooth, even in the most juiced of juiced maps. That's not bad. That's a yep. decent use for it, I guess. Yeah, I just feel like a lot of the keystones are really terrible. Like, I'm looking at kineticism. And it's like, attack projectiles always inflict bleeding and maim and knockback, but projectiles cannot pierce, fork, or chain. It's just like... I was having a thought about that one the other day, but I, it probably is a fluke. It's like, does Rain of Arrows count as a projectile? Because it does as a bow skill scale with projectile damage, but I think it does only count as an area hit. Because then for Rain of Arrows, it would be good. Rain of Arrows mm -hmm. works. It's a projectile. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a projectile. Yeah. 99% sure. But that's the only use that I can come up with for that, because obviously with Rain of Arrows, you don't... Yeah, you don't do any of those any... 
And yeah. then having the guaranteed bleed is kind of cool and the guaranteed main. Yeah, it has the uh, projectile tag, so. That's all projectile damage. That's that's a good use for that. That'll work. But is it a projectile hit? That's a yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah, it is. All right, so next one. Veterans Awareness. 10% to all elemental resistances and maximum elemental resistances while affected by a non-vol guard skill. I was like, ooh. And then... 20% additional physical damage reduction while affected by a non-vol guard skill. Even better. And then you get 20% more damage taken if a non-vol guard buff was lost recently. <laughs> yeah, which ruins the entire... Like, it's just <laughs> unusable, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's like... <laughs> straight up unusable. You're either super fucking tanky or you're wearing half an abyssus, but worse. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's all damage. 20% more damage taken. It's not like 20% increased damage taken. It's 20% more damage taken. It's just like, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. I was like, who is It's actually this? not as bad as increased if you already have a lot of increased damage taken. <laughs> you, you shouldn't. <laughs> uh, uh, oh there's God. this uh, Disciple of Kitava thing. That uh, mm -hmm. consumes a corpse every second and gives you 5% of your life and mana or something like that back for it, but then makes you take increased damage if you've not consumed a corpse recently. I've been thinking about putting that onto my summoner because recently is exactly 4 seconds, and 4 seconds is also the cooldown on the trigger craft. So basically, I cast offerings every 4 seconds, meaning I consume corpses, so it would never be down. But I'm just afraid of that one moment. That, is, I that is absolutely not something I do in hardcore at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm afraid of that window where I don't consume like, a corpse and all yeah, of a sudden. If I was like game. a VD spell slinger and that was, that's going to be like, oh, that's, that is 100% up. Yeah. Then mm -hmm. maybe. But. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like that is uh, the, the, the plus is like itsy bitsy and then the downside is just so huge if it was like every second consuming nearby corpse to recover 50 percent of your life in mana i'd be like hmm, that could be cool but five percent not yeah. worth uh, and then uh yeah, as we're talking about how Cyclone is pretty much the only melee skill that feels good. A lot of people are playing Lacerate, though. The Bleed archetype is really good, I heard. With the Cluster Jewels, there is a notable called Wound Aggravation, which uh, gives a lot of uh, Bleed bonuses that people like to stack. That I heard some people were also using Lone Messenger, which is you can only have one Herald, 50% more effective Herald buffs on you, 100% damage from hits with Herald skills, 50% dot with herald and then minions from heralds deal 25 percent more damage but you get no auras yeah that's kind of popular mm. i remember that when uh, they released all the info i looked at that one i was like this is probably going to be some good shit around this I haven't, I haven't really seen too much personally but like i say pretty nice it's kind of like imagine only using one aura in this league though <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm looking at my build that just like wants corrupted auras onto every piece of gear because I can't find enough sockets for all my auras. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's like, man, I can't believe the uh, Doriani's boots are actually popping off like 16 plus exalts just because uh, it gives you one more gem spot. <laughs> a pair of those showed up yesterday on trade. For 180 exalts, mm -hmm. it had a 10 percent movement speed craft on it, and they were corrupted with another aura. I think it was haste. Yeah. And so it was like two auras on a pair of boots with the 10 percent movement speed. <laughs> and they went the same day. Somebody bought them for 180 X. <laughs> Can't blame them. They probably just dropped off voices and uh, picked those up. Yep. It's insane. Maybe I should corrupt them. What do you guys think? That'd be a good gamble video. <laughs> that Sounds decent. Yep. So you, you can get haste. You can get socketed aura gems. 
I think haste is actually the only aura you can get there. Uh. That's pretty rare. I've been thinking about just crafting elusive tailwind boots over and over again and just like mass corrupting those to try and fit my extra aura in them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's maybe worth a mention. On, on the small dodge jewels, you can actually get a 10% chance to get elusive on kill. I've been using that on my jug as well. It's, mm. it's just so nice while clearing. I mean, it's like a, what, three-point investment? Jewel socket and the two-pointer small cluster jewel. And... Yeah, just every once in a yeah. while you start at 30 movement speed additional. I don't know. I feel like for three points, that's way too much investment, especially if you're not dodge stacking already. Like, it adds yeah, a just, little just bit for the of clear defense. speed. I'm, I'm actually thinking about changing it for a small cluster with Fettel or just for the life because I go, I mean, that's like three, four hundred life that I can gain instead of, uh, instead of mm. elusive. Yeah, I, I think the movement speed on. alone is worth it. Yeah, that's what I was. I just feel like but at the same time, on the tree where you can get movement speed, like going and getting precision or something, which gives you movement speed, or yeah, a like quick step but, or something. Oh, at I the same time, of movement I feel already. I feel like it's worth it because all my gems need mana reservation, and so I'm already getting that out of it. Like the jewel socket is just like. I've I've currently got uh, one of those I can't remember the name of it the one that makes your traps do physical damage. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one of my jewels right now because it's got mana reservation on it and any meaningful jewel that has mana reservation is like eighty to hundred x. So I mean I'm already using shit jewels. So <laughs> realistically, that elusive would only become a two point investment, and I should probably get it and drop it off my boots. That would make them way easier to get better gear on. This is why this league's so weird. Yep. But that's what I like about, like, this. there's so many different things how you can juggle things around even in Endgame with your passive tree now with the cluster jewels that it, it doesn't feel as stale anymore. And getting that, what you said earlier, Don, getting that one more passive point can mean so much of a change for your cluster jewel setup, for your passive tree setup, so that it really keeps you grinding. But uh, to round up the... The cluster jewel topic, how do you guys see cluster jewels do going core? Or like three-part question. First of all, do you see them going core? If they go core, how do you think they will be accessible? And then how do you think they can be balanced in the game? And uh, we'll start with Burger because he's raising the arm. <laughs> oh. um, I think the demand for them going core is going to be incredibly high. I, I, I don't see a way that people want to go back to not having clusters anymore. Yeah, because it's such a fun, fun it, it's such a fun thing to implement into the game and changing up so many builds and making so many builds better or, or stronger or more fun overall. I don't see a way that they can just be like next to like, oh, by the way, we're not adding clusters. A lot of people are not going to be happy about that. How they're going to add it, though, I have no idea if they're going to make, you know, Delirium Core in that sense and you still get them from there or whatever. But I hope that they go core. And I very much doubt that they would not make them go core because I'm mean, like, I can't tell anyone who doesn't want them to go core right now, you know? I would hope that they give them the catalyst treatment. And what I mean by that is last league, I had almost no catalysts, right? In this league, <laughs> I'm literally Scrooge McDucking, swimming through Catalyst, doing backstroke. I have so many freaking Catalysts everywhere. So I hope they make Cluster Jewels like as available. And so the Cluster Jewels are already pretty available, and so I just hope they kind of keep them at the same level. You just add it as a reward to whatever the new league is. So the new league, uh, you have to chase down ducks or something like that, and they before they disappear into their duck portal, uh, like... And then they drop cluster jewels as a reward or something. Uh, like I, I hope that's like what they do. And one of the things that's really great about cluster jewels is that they can add or even remove cluster jewel types from the drop table for balancing stuff. And so it's just like, or like change the mods around and what things can roll. And what that does is allows them to like make big arcing changes to the tree. Uh, I don't think that there's any universe where they're going to be able to not include cluster jewels just due to like yeah. uh, what they do in terms of media. Cause they're like, Hey, 
we have completely revamped our entire passive tree in order to make it so that you can create your own passive tree. And we're not including that next month. Uh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, there's just no way it's not going to be there. Like, I, I would be super surprised if there was no cluster jewels next league. Something I've wanted them to do for a while that they did once or twice and I loved is no matter what, I don't think that the league we're doing right this second should be involved in the next league. I would like all leagues to have one league off before they're added to the main game. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so in terms the, of the-, the times that they did that, it felt way better. But as far as is it going to be in the main game? I don't even think it's a question. They're adding them. They they were added before the league even started. That's way too much work. I wonder why they were added as league exclusive to begin with. Like they were rewarded through the league, but it, it felt like a core addition from the start. I agree yeah. With that. Because they changed the passageway. Yeah. Like I, I hope that they would like, if they didn't want to put Delirium into the core concept, that they would like pull the cluster jewels out of that. Like a lot, like. You can get Catalyst without ever touching Metamorph right now. And I think that's totally like how they should move forward with it. They should not uh, remove the rewards if they're going to remove the league. If that makes sense. Yeah. Jewels are definitely staying. Yeah. You like, think, no, please spell. Uh, sorry. Um, oh, like you say, if they don't add the Lyrum to their core game next league, well, at least add the clusters and, and we're fine. That's all they need to do, really. We can go ahead now. Do you see uh, a merit uh, in, in um, limiting them? Because one of the fun things is that they're not limited. You could just stack them, stack all the notables technically infinitely. Do you think we'll see notables being adjusted to accommodate for that fact that people are stacking so many of the same notable? Or do you think that... that some notables should be limited to one or to two or something like that. Also, do you think that something like voices should be limited? I saw in chat someone was like, voices limited to one low. So do you think that that should happen? So I feel like if you make it so that the notables no longer stack, that A, it creates confusing situations on the tree. So for example, uh, People are like, but notables never stacked if you anoint the same thing. Well, actually, before you can anoint anything ever, uh, timeless jewels could make it so that like all the notables in the area turn into different notables, and you could have the same notable. You could have like attack speed, attack speed, attack speed, attack speed, and you could take all of those and get tons of attack speed or minion damage or physical damage. There's a whole lot of things that people would do with that. Uh, and it's not super duper popular because timeless jewels are garbage in terms of communicating exactly what they do and makes it really hard to trade for them craft for them yada 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 but uh if you make it so that notables only stack one time where are you going to put that information is it something the player is going to need to know ahead of time even then it's like it just makes it so much harder for like it creates even more of a learning cliff in this type of thing so i think not making them stack is kind of silly and also there's a lot of them that like work right now with them stacking. Like I feel like Warcry stacking, like there's only so many ones that are actually good and some of them are actually kind of really terrible. So like I wouldn't want more than like one or two Warcry jewels if they weren't stacking at all, period. And then like builds like for example, Hollow Bomb would be like, okay, cool. I guess I'm not using Warcry anymore. I'm just all slap another megalomaniac or something in here. Mm-hmm. And then like stack like going out and like getting expensive jewels where it's like a lot of deep cuts so like for example i have two large clusters that both have deep cuts uh and then i have a megalomaniac that's getting another one all of that's expensive and that's like and it's powerful but it's also expensive and having things that are is powerful because it's stacking is good but then having things that are like i can literally just walk right through serious storm because i have so many uh herald jewels mm. stacked up that's a problem. Like almost like almost every single one of the Herald notable ones are like, who thought this was a good idea? Buff effect stacking? That's a really terrible idea. Endbringer? Oh, I can get 125% increased damage for one notable? Oh, that's a great idea. Uh, and, and so like those numbers either need to get dialed down or maybe just be like, 
uh, for each herald on you up to three or something like that. So you can't like stack it to the moon on every single one. It's so dumb. And so the ones that are overpowered, maybe need to get dialed down, but don't fucking shoot all of the cluster jewels because heralds are ridiculous. No, I agree 100% with that. And that's, that's something that yeah. GDG has showed over the last couple of patches is that rather than limiting things, they just increase the amount of investment that's needed to get to the same power level. So I, I hope that we'll see the same. Valor, you want to add something? chime in on that topic right so first of all limiting voices clusters to one makes sense those are unique jewels and we can limit uniques we've already got that in many other places limiting unique jewels so that's i'm straight on board with limiting voices limit them to right? two i think two is fine three is where it gets crazy e e either way like limiting them is a good option what, what number they come to. Limiting regular passives, I don't think I'd love. I know, I don't, I, I honestly don't know the answer to fix like Herald stacking ones, but there's a ton that have flown under the radar. We've talked about a bunch of them that if Herald didn't exist might be more prominent that would also be garbage. If you could only have one of them, you probably wouldn't even bother. Um, And I don't know, I don't, I don't want to lose those just because heralds are OP. Like, that's not. And as well as that, I'm not 100% positive that I'm against the idea that you can make a build that can stand in Cirrus's storms and face tank everything. What I'm against is that you can build the build to be that powerful for as little as... 200 to 300 X, which sounds like a lot, but to get that level of power, I feel like if a build like that cost you a thousand or 2000 X to put together, it would be okay to be that powerful. I don't like having the idea of a, just a hard capped power ceiling that like, this is as tanky as you can possibly be, no matter how much you throw into it, but it should be goddamn for the amount of power that this build has, it should be a lot more expensive than it is. Wait till you see so, it serious. I've been waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting. I, I, I feel like it's coming soon. It's definitely coming. There's definitely a new Viserys. It's a whole different I can't wait. Yeah. Can talk about that. But, but yeah, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't actually mind that the Herald build exists is the point there. I just think even at its current outrageous prices, it's far too cheap. Okay. In so the fact, thing I like these about outrageous prices only exist because 60% of the fucking soft core player base is playing it. <laughs> if this build was so expensive that even if 2% of the players were playing it, it would still be worth 1,500 exalts to just get it running. And, it, and only 2% could even afford that build, that mm. would be an appropriate investment for this bullshit level of power, right? Yeah. Whereas, like, I don't, I don't want to just take away, oh, this is the ultimate power build that's way more powerful than anything we've had in, like, a year. Yeah. And, and just be like, well, that shouldn't exist. I don't think the answer is it shouldn't exist. I think the answer is it should be so far out of the reach of most people that it costs a bajillion fucking current like exalted orbs to get the bastard running and 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 working at that level that that is a better solution to me than taking it away i don't know i uh, i so far with like all the herald stuff that has been happening this league i don't really like to play like the crazy builds light i didn't even want to see or touch necromancers overall and and with all all this herald stacking right now as well it feels I'm like, I can see that it's fun and that it's crazy for a league and it, it was something that happened, mistake by GG, whatever you want to call it. But personally, I don't see any part of where it's healthy for a game like Path of Excel or any game where you can completely neglect mechanics in the end game content, even no matter how much you invest into it. I've been playing so many games for my whole life, all the 
shooter games and all the MMORPGs and, and a couple of ARPGs and everything like that. And I just don't see, like, standing in the storm, it just feels, really, it just feels way too stupid. Sure that you can become extremely tanky and that you can sleep through most of the game, but literally, like, where you can AFK, it doesn't feel healthy to me. Um, even if you invest 1,000x into it, even if you invest in pure levels of, of money into it, I just don't see where it's actually healthy to do that. But like I say, it's even worse when 50% of everyone is in software is doing it. It's like now everyone is almost just neglecting these mechanics. It's and, going to be a real kick in the pants when they nerf it. <laughs> yeah, and, and to be honest, I want them to nerf it really bad as well. Um, and like PoE is some form of a skill-based game. You know, like you can invest a ton and it doesn't really become that skill-based anymore. You can, you can have a ton of defenses and you can have 50, 100 millions of DPS and you can smash everything in a millisecond. But still, that level of power, I just don't see how that's good for anyone, to be honest. So you and, feel like uh, one-shot mechanics should be like almost completely unavoidable? I think everything in a game, that's just me. That's just my preference, though. I've played so much World of Warcraft and everything like that. I just feel like everything, if you're skilled enough, you should be able to do it. But there should never be a, a, a level where you can just not have to care about anything. Like, I invest 1,000x, and there's nothing in the game that, I, that bothers me at all. Not a single thing in the game. I think historically that's been a really big point where the community is very divided. <laughs> is there's a, a big portion of the community thinks that the hardest of content should not be trivializable, and the big portion thinks that at the highest investment you should be able to trivialize all content. Yeah. And it, it's really hard to, you know, to strike the balance between those two positions. I understand yeah. that. I mean, like, if you invest a ton of money, you should be rewarded with the feeling of power. Like, if you literally invest a thousand X, you should feel that, hey, I invested a thousand X. Well, what I just are you going like... to challenge your character with at that point? Yeah, I know. I, I don't know. I guess that's the problem. Pee-wee is such Double a hard game to balance go. around that specific thing that, like, you can always almost push it even harder. But I don't know. I, I'm hoping that they're going to nerf hell stacking and for the time being right now in the league i don't really mind it people can play it all they want i, I don't really mind it i'm not going to play it but next league if i would see the same thing happen again people just afk content i don't know it feels like cheating in a way for me like you're not really playing if you just if everything is so easy that you don't have to do anything well, but like being... that is very personal preference as well some people just want to play the game that way and and that's uh, absolutely up to them if they want to do it I feel like it'd be very different if there was like a new higher level of content that was actually providing a ton of great gear that wasn't easily available to people. Like, so I kind of felt like Delirium and Simulacrum, like Wave 20 was kind of going to be like this at first. Because when I first did my first Simulacrum, it took me 33 minutes to just barely not complete it. Yep. Uh, and I was like, dang, I wonder if like Wave 20 actually gives some sort of crazy loot. No, it doesn't really. Uh, <laughs> definitely isn't all that amazing. You're like, yay, I got the challenge complete. And then, like, sometimes, like, your reward tiles are pretty great. <laughs> but, like, it, if there was, like, an Uber level of Sirius or something, and, uh, like, when Sirius first came out, it kind of felt like, oh, man, only a few builds is going to be able to handle it this league and as we learn the mechanics and figure things out and figured out like oh the, the storms actually chase you and we'll just like run you down here's how to deal with that uh serious became like the difficulty tier went like Ooh, and now yeah. he's like way down here and then like harold build pushes it down even farther now if they had released uber serious this league so if uber serious was a brand new thing and it was like uh, if Sirius right now is down here, if Uber Sirius was up here, like only a couple builds could handle it, but Harold stacking builds can just walk in there, face tank everything. Oh, all four conquerors are shooting at me right now, and Sirius just laser beam me. Oh, I didn't die. Uh, let me just one shot everything with a uh, one attack. Uh, then I would be like, you need to obliterate this build from the face of the break last. <laughs> uh, and like, if they want to add in a higher tier content like that, you definitely can't have a build that is like that powerful almost ever without making it feel like you have to play it. Which is like, I feel like Diablo 3's biggest 
uh, downfall was like their ladder system because it's like, oh man, if I want to be doing the top of the ladder, which PUE doesn't have, so like you don't necessarily feel like you're forced to play the most effective, efficient build, uh, then you can play a whole bunch of builds. Like it doesn't matter. Like oh man, if I kill Cirrus in three minutes or ten minutes, it doesn't matter. I killed him. Like awesome, my hmm. build works. I can farm Cirrus. But when it's like oh, I can kill Cirrus three thousand seven hundred forty-two. Uh, which is the new world high record, but I can only do it in this one build. If I have every single possible jewel, I guess I need to do that build too. Uh, that's when it becomes a problem. And so, yeah, if as long as more than one build can handle the content and kind of handle it easily, and there's not one build that is like skyscrapers yeah. above everything else, it's fine. Rambling. <laughs> no, but you do, you made some good points fun. there, and you provided the perfect segue to the simulacrum, which was the intended topic for after we finished the cluster <laughs> jewels. So uh, you already told us a little bit about your experience with it and the expectations when you went into it. Uh, yeah, I also thought going into the league that the fact that we get delirium to make all the content harder and it interacts with all the leagues, and then we're able to delirium maps for even more delirium effect. I thought that was going to be, you know, that was going to be the new end game, the new, almost the infinite scaling of Delve, right? Because you can make the hardest content even more harder. But then, yeah. I mean, I haven't done a lot of, um, I don't, I haven't done any simulacrum yet. I didn't feel ready for it. But uh, the Delirium <laughs> maps. Don't Isn't it worth being in hardcore? <clears throat> <laughs> it's worth I'm saving them up I'm saving them up for when I got my build completely have you done together. 100% delirious map yet no <laughs> alright be ready to totally shit your pants yeah. <laughs> you're gonna yeah. be like what the fuck if I'm getting out of here the, that if you've white done monster an, if you've done an 80% delirious map and you feel comfortable in there don't worry about it because that's irrelevant because the jump yeah. from 80 to 100 is fucking massive really it's yeah. not, it's not yeah. proportional no, yeah. no, it so, doesn't get like twenty percent stronger. That's not uh, a tier ten <laughs> map with one hundred percent delirious. Feels like a tier seventeen. Yeah, yeah. Good to know. Because I, I was like, oh, I'm gonna try one hundred percent delirious on like a tier ten. See how it goes. I'm like, holy crap, I can barely do this. <laughs> uh, but I'm like, I'm literally farming two orb tier sixteen on this character. I'm like, what yep. the heck is this? And chat's like, do a tier, do a one hundred percent tier sixteen. I'm like, you guys are. Yeah, and that's what I meant. Like when I did tier 16 100%, it I'm not joking. It actually took me 30 minutes or longer, I think. It was like yeah. I'm killing one mob at a time and and I'm sweating. I'm sweating after one mob and I'm like, "Well, I got a thousand more mobs to kill now." And you're like sweating after one. Like yeah. everything is insane in there. They're Every so fun to boss. You roll beyond yeah. on your fully delirious maps? <laughs> I, I think if you've got a headhunter only if you yeah, I don't know, I, don't just, I don't do that shit. <laughs> if you don't, if you don't have a headhunter, do not put Beyond on your yeah. on your one hundred percent delirious map. People, so, people were telling me like, do Beyond. I'm like, I hell no, I ain't doing Beyond. Nope. <laughs> no way, dude. <laughs> I, I made the mistake of putting Beyond, and then like I tried to do it with my headhunter character, couldn't kill anything to get started, and oh, so I, I ran through on my cyclone character, like weakened up a whole bunch of shit, and then ran through my headhunter. <laughs> Still couldn't kill enough stuff to actually get rolling. Just died. Uh, like, rare monster pops up from beyond, just fucking one shot my character. I'm like, oh, this is hard, dude. You can never get enough stacks and put rolling everything. to, like... Like, yeah, if you right. could kill the first third of a map on that headhunter character, you'd be juiced enough to get through the rest. But yeah, you just... can't get those first buffs up. You gotta pre-do the map and just put everything at calling, just like 10, 20%, then just come in with a character that's calling. All right, now we can get started, boys. Yeah, yeah, they run it with the, <laughs> with the Cyclone, but then do it yeah. with Rim Sorrow, so you can only kill things that are frozen <laughs> on your pure fist build. Bring everything to like 0% and then just yep. kill it with the, the head to build afterward. The, but uh, yeah, uh, Berger, have but like you... This, the, oh. this is the same character, though, that like on a tier 16 will like pop a Legion, and the entire screen will flash white as the entire legion explodes. And then hmm. uh, if I actually hit everything, it'll like unlock and then they'll flash white again and everything will die. 
<laughs> and I, I can't kill a single white monster of that character to get started. Yep. So yeah, enjoy your first 100% Delirious. Well, you know what the good thing is about Delirious maps? You can actually rip them to standard, so I can actually do them after I killed my character in one. <laughs> I can still test around in standard with it. Normally, yep. the leak exclusive content is where I always feel bad in hardcore. When I do it and I die, I can't, you know, go back and prove my character and try it again. But this time, I might be able to. Um, have you tried any simulacrum? Oh, simulacrum is in standard. You can do simulacrum in standard. There's 735 chaos. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Damn. Money, money, money. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Burger, will you yeah. share your experiences with uh, Simulacrum, please? Because I don't have any. I need to soak up all the experiences I can. Simulacrum, uh, it was really fun at the beginning. And like you said, Don, it felt like uh, it was going to be something pretty crazy. Uh, but then pretty quickly, it just become, it, it just turned into something, to me, pretty boring. You just have this very small area. They just sit and wait for anything special to happen for the first 15 waves. It's just kind of boring to me. And I ran them a lot early on, and then I got bored pretty quickly. Even though I know you can make so much money and you can get all these crazy things, it just wasn't fun for me after a while. Um, in the beginning, it was so much fun. But then, like, and so many people say this to me as well. A, a lot of people are like, well, you just do the first 16 waiting for anything to happen. And then the last few, yeah. it's a little bit crazy, but... I don't know. In terms of XP, it's pretty crazy, though. Um, the other guy, a guy was boosting me, one of my new level characters. I just stood in a corner, and he just did the whole thing. And I got, like, seven, eight levels from, like, 75 to 80 plus or something. So the XP can be really good before you hit 90 if you want to get boosted. But other than that, I don't know. To me, they're kind of boring now. But I yeah. saw someone suggest in my channel that, like, like you said, like you have this ladder thing, like you said, Dawn, you just push further. And someone said it would be cool if they would add more levels to it. But then after a while, the rewards stop. So even though you have like this crazy build that no one else has, you can still push further and see how far you can go. Like, can you go to 50? Can you go to 60? But the rewards stop. So you don't just hmm. like the rich, is, the rich don't get more richer. You know what the saying is. J just but you could at EP. least try out like how far can you go kind of thing. That'd be cool to see, but yeah, I, I would totally be down for that. As long as there's yeah. no reward for going yeah. higher, like I feel like the only thing in the game right now that rewards like that is labyrinth ladder, and I feel like that is the most toxic thing in the game. Uh, but yeah, I think that'd be really cool. I think another thing that'd be neat, and they should be able to do this, is like when you put a fragment map into your map device, all of the league mods get grayed out because you can't add them. Uh, it'd be really cool if it, when you put a simulacrum in there, it's like, hey, pay a two additional chaos, start on wave five. Pay three additional chaos, start on wave ten. Pay uh, five additional chaos, start on wave fifteen. And then, like, also juice up the quantity and rarity there. So, like, even though you're missing all of these fucking waves, you can, like, get some yeah. reward out of there yeah. and blast up last. What about Delve? Uh, so, the very bottom of Delve, like, definitely has a lot of. Like, there are rewards there, but it's not, like, an actual ladder that matters and that anyone cares about. Like, nobody actually gets a reward for being the deepest Delver besides getting to be like, hey, look at my name in chat. Guys, look at my name in chat. Oh, it's so cool. But, like, I mean, that uh, is cool. Though. when you're the fastest Uber Labber and it's, like, always the same dude, you can be like, hey, I'm just going to charge 100 exalts per these jewels. I make 100 exalts a day. Easy peasy without really doing anything. And uh, I think that's super toxic. Yeah. Yep. So, much. You said you did 40, Beller, and you, yeah. then you stopped doing them, and now you just sell them. The yeah, now that. I just sell them. They're way too boring to run. Um it's probably because I've got a Herald stacker and it's Spark. <laughs> and what I do is stand in the center, hold right click, and then turn on an angle like this, and then just chat to chat without looking. And I wait for the loot filter to make noises that <laughs> says that the wave is over. And then I go pick up my loot and click the, the go button. And then I go back and I stand in the middle and hold Spark until everything dies. And That's so what I mean. it just, 
I don't know. I feel like at the beginning of the league, it felt like it was, I was like, yeah, good. This is going to be actually dangerous. But now I want wave 30 and 40 to get harder. And I don't really care how they do it. You know what would be really nice? Instead of just being able to up the reward, I don't want to be able to up the reward. It's obvious. Right now, I think it might be some of the most rewarding content in the game. It's ridiculous um, how much money those things make. It's actually ridiculous. Those could sell at 3x a pop and you could buy them and still make profit. Like, that's ridiculous. But Only it's if you're too going boring for me to run. All the pieces. Like, it's yeah. Like, oh, yeah, no, you have to go and I'm never going to do that, right? Like, that's not happening. I don't do that much trading. Yeah. But if you would like just pure profit, they could be 3x a piece and you would still be making money. But what I would like to be able to do is start at wave 10, but have it be wave one. Still do 20 waves, but I start at the difficulty of wave 10 and I would continue getting more difficult until <laughs> it would be the equivalent of whatever wave 30 is. Wave 30, nothing but kosis. <laughs> <laughs> Every move is kosis, you're like, God damn. <laughs> Everything is just but the see, back yeah. of worm <laughs> that, would, that would be fun to me. That would be really fun, and I would be pushing to see how far I could get in it. And if you just kept the reward level the same, or I guess you, you could incentivize it by making the rewards slightly better, when you do something like that, but what I'd like to see is like 10% more rewards for starting, for doing 10 waves harder, right? So it's like a little bit more reward, but now it's five times as hard as it was, but only a little bit more rewarding. Like, so there's still like a little bit of incentive, but not, but, but like, if you can just do the regular one, you're still getting like 90% of everything this 1000 exalt character can do, right? So it's not. Like it has to, some sort of extra reward has to be there, but it really just has to be like a nominal one to just feel good enough that it's See, worth doing. Like it's it's really just slippery slope over there because, like, as soon as you like start being like, any reward, then Reddit and everybody else is like, I can't do Simulacrum one hundreds. Empyrean over here is making a billion dollars, uh, and it's just like. <laughs> Uh, and so yeah, just but... like 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 these in the kind of the streamer experience where it's like you're like playing at the high level and it's like it's fun people want to see it but it's also it creates like if like a, a fomo situation where people have the fear of missing out and so uh and like generally people get really salty about that type of content in path of exile in my personal experience yeah, I think a lot of people would be like, they would be forced, if you would have that system right now, and like Herald Stack would probably be the only thing that could actually touch that high, then everyone in the game would be like, I'm forced to play Herald Stacker and I have to do it if I want to push that hard. And it would just force more people to try to do it. And a lot of people would probably be even more mad about it as well, being forced to do this one thing. And then the prices are already high. The prices would probably be even higher as well. If fifty percent of the people are doing it right now, and then all of a sudden eighty percent of the people want to do it instead, the prices would probably be even more insane. And that, like you say, Don, a lot of people like I wouldn't really mind, but I know a lot of people would probably really mad about that. So I have a problem with that one sentiment of, oh, but if we want to compete at the highest level, I'm forced to play this specific build, and I feel like at all times across all games, and also in real life in most situations if you want to compete at the highest level you are shoehorned into what is the best thing yeah. and Don't no matter how well out. you balance the game it doesn't matter if a build turns out the best build in the game turns out to be one percent better than the worst build in the game if you want to co try and compete at the highest level you have to play that one yeah that, that like, is that's true, what though. happens that is it doesn't matter how true. much stronger it is so like, like just being like, oh, the Herald build's broken, everyone would be forced to play it. Okay, but if it was only like 5% better, it was just a little bit better than everything else, everyone would still feel forced to play it if there was a ladder. Like that's a thing on them. That's not something we can avoid. Not that the Herald build isn't broken, it is, but I'm just saying no matter what, that sentiment will happen regardless. Yeah. So I'm going to 100% disagree with you. I'm going to give you actual historical Path of Exile evidence to show, to back Let's up my go. point. Uh, and so... 
the last few leagues i haven't really felt like there's anything that's like oh i must play this in order to be really good with the exception of afk necromancer blight which from what i understand people were like streaming them quint boxing uh afk necromancing and then like doing full-time trading as they like or looting full-time looting uh and so that's really really op and like but i don't think people wanted to play that because that's not really playing uh but my example is legion league uh there is this build uh where basically you'd be cycloning the entire fucking screen and getting four to five bars full of loot and so mm-hmm. if you wanted to actually do the end game content of legion league you needed to have a headhunter double inspired learnings uh, a little bit of curse effect maybe and a friend to uh reset the five-way army for you and if you didn't have that there was absolutely zero reason you should run any of the league uh stones for the most part because profitability margins weren't there you would make more money selling the stones to somebody who had that stuff and uh a lot of people needed for challenge anyways so a lot of people were paying for carries and other things but people were so freaking salty that they couldn't actually do the league mechanic because they weren't doing the all op meta mm-hmm. build and so i feel like if you had something like that uh especially if it continues to scale up even higher even if the even if the rewards like this much more minusculely better uh yeah, the market people prices would, be, would still be driven by the people who are able to do the hardest version of that content that ends to be ends up to be most rewarding it just creates super toxic uh reddit would be up with pitchforks uh people would be like uh trying to go to new zealand to uh you know <laughs> to, to to pick at the the front of the giga gee offices I'm, and like i'm gonna go knock on the door <laughs> and they'd be like oh shoot i can't even leave my house how am i going you will to hear my complaints in person <laughs> hello mr Wilson. i'm going to exile con just to complain about the herald stacking <laughs> And this is like, yeah. And so, like, I would say, like, we we would love to think that people wouldn't feel forced to play the best build if there was something that was, like, scaling significantly up in difficulty. But that's just not the case. And, like, the biggest strength Path of Exiles always had is that there's, like, a kind of a level uh, of strength that, like, a build needs. But then a lot of builds can get past that point. So like it's right. not just like uh and so like it used to be kind of opposite of this. So like if you wanted to be farming Uber at Ziri, for example, uh you like were doing this like blasphemy curse mind setup. And if you were doing anything else, you were probably occasionally bricking a map, losing money, and so you only played this one particular build for this one particular thing. Uh especially if in hardcore and uh there was a dude, uh he goes by Lady now, who I uh, should think won one of the races. And uh, he, like, leveled from, I think, 96 to 100 in hardcore, only killing Uber Ziri on this particular character. And it's just like, yeah, it felt super gated in. And PUE, for the most part, doesn't feel super gated. Like, I'm sure that all of us here have killed Cirrus with more than one or two skills. And so... That's really cool. I I think that's a big positive PUE. I think... I think it's stupid, but I think I'll concede on the reward part of that because I, while I think in practice there would be a really, really difference between big difference between minusculely scaling the rewards up, like making it you know a hundred percent more difficult for five percent more reward and just letting you stack that indefinitely, is largely different from how the Legion fight worked, which was more like if you had the Headhunter self chains set up, you got twenty two. Um, five-way fights worth of rewards out of one reward mm-hmm. instead, which was ridiculous. But you're probably right. People would react the same way, even if it was a more appropriate area. But still, I still want it to scale. And I think the point about being shoehorned into builds still holds true even if you don't up the reward at all if there's just a ladder to chase that gives no extra reward people will still feel shoehorned into whatever is going to be the best 
to mm -hmm. compete on the ladder. Even if that means nothing and it comes with no reward, I feel like that feeling of being shoehorned into something is just something everybody needs to get over just in general. Like if you want to be the <laughs> best at this exact thing, then you have to play one of the best things for that thing. Just don't feel shoehorned at, for at that mode. time. So are you proposing that the entire player base needs to change their uh, mindset and social consciousness and needs to become woke about build uh, choices? <laughs> is, 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 is this your recommendation? Oh, man, I don't like the way that was. Can I, can I stick with the way I phrased it? <laughs> I, <asked. No. laughs> I don't think the vocal I mean, portion I mean, of I'm the... Yo, only playing woke builds here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll change my name to Baylor Woke. <laughs> it, just, woke it sounds mage. way I worse that it. way. Vote just... Strawpole in the chat. Woke mage or Baylor Woke? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I think not everyone who's really vocal about that sort of stuff or... Wait, not everyone in the community is really upset about that stuff. So the people that awesome. aren't upset aren't vocal, right? The yeah. people who like are posting on Reddit or on Twitch care about what's going on and aren't just like trying to experience PoE in their own little bubble. The people that are like, hey, uh, I want to go and play PoE for the very first time without a build guide. I want to like figure it out for myself those guys don't need a build guide they're not like looking for things like that and they're not like the people that are like oh my gosh why is why is the meta like they're they don't even care about the meta and so we don't hear about them i'm sure there's a large majority of the players fall into that category it is the small yet vocal group of people that are like that care about the meta that care about like i didn't get a headhunter in the first two weeks of this league it's op broken <laughs> uh bring back nemesis chancing like all this kind of stuff and it's just like though like even though this is like the smaller amount of people and like there are only so many people that are actually dealing with this stuff uh they're like the like the loud majority and that's kind of like what the game looks like to people that actually look at our community and so if you're like oh maybe go check out this i'm gonna check out this poe game Let's look at the Reddit, see what people are talking about. Let's go to Twitch, see what people are playing or doing. Oh, I see a guy. Uh, his build is... Well, I'm not really sure what's going on. I just see a large foot uh, walking <laughs> through the screen. Uh, he, his character appears to be uh, some sort of giant build. Uh, is this a giant build? I'm not really sure what's going on. He seems to just be annihilating everything, just picking up nonstop loot. Uh, hmm. Okay, let's go to the next thing. Oh, he's this other guy is also playing that giant build. Yeah, everyone must play this giant build. That, that must be the only option in the entire game. And just like it kind of creates this weird, weird thing that's going on. <laughs> but I, I don't mm. really think you can really get away from having metas in different games, though. Uh, like, obviously, GGG shouldn't and don't want to really build the game around having such things but it's something that just always pops up every game everywhere no matter what game it is every game that i've at least seen there's always a meta and there's probably always going to be that like i said bella mage people are just going to be drawn to something that might be a little bit more powerful at that point and stuff like that but like you said like adding more rewards to something that a small percentage can actually do then you're kind of focusing even more on like having that and i don't think that would be good but there's always going to be like a meta and everything i think yeah I, I believe what i wanted to say just a second ago was uh that not everyone of that demographic of the community that you described don that is involved and that cares about the game not everyone is part of the you know same group that feels pressured into playing the best thing and i think for a lot of people or a big part of the community or even not even excluding myself for a lot of people it would be helpful to experience the game without constantly looking what other people are doing and feeling behind other people because there's always 
something that you could be doing better. And I'm not saying that you should completely close your eyes to that, but you shouldn't make your depend enjoyment of the game depend as much on what other people are doing um, as some people do. But I do I also agree that there is a trade reality that um, is affected by the most efficient way to play the game, obviously. So yeah. it's not completely free of that. But um, what I'm, I, what I'm getting, just trying to say is I get a, a lot of people are scamming themselves out of enjoyment on the game where they could be doing much better if they weren't upset about something like that. No. But it's also a matter of the question of how much better is the top tier, how big is the disparity. The best builds in the game shouldn't be ten times better than the the same best builds. What what if what if they cost twenty five times as much? Uh, I think at the highest tier, you always get a very very high investment, like exponentially yeah. going up investment for marginal improvements. Um, Honestly, this league is the first league I've seen where a builds like as expensive as Herald stacking can be. Like where people are like two thousand, four thousand exalt builds. I'm just like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only other place you see investment like this in a build is in standard. Yeah. yeah. You don't see investment like this in the builds in leaks. That's not. And the scary thing is, it's not investment in mirror tier rares. And I think that's part of the problem. Is that like, you're getting corrupted jewels, which are like, carrying a lot of the price of the build, or these uh, mm. unique voices jewels, which are carrying a lot of the value. Uh, I kind of feel like that's so weird. <clears throat> yeah. So here's a question. If a build became this strong as the Herald Stacker was, but it did still cost one or two thousand X, but it was mostly rare, perfect mirrored things. Would you be more happy with it existing? Yes. No, you had to go. You had to go hunt down like the perfect items and mirror them from people and whatnot. But then you did end up eventually one or two thousand x deep into a build that was this good and this tanky and could stand in serious storms. But you had to find or craft all of these things that were disgusting. Uh, yeah, I'd totally be fine with that. I mean, like my hollow palm character, for example. Like even just crafting my belt. Like I think I threw like two hundred plus essences at the belt before I even hit the like two suffixes I want. And I didn't hit like perfect three suffix or anything, but still like, and then I went and meta crafted it. And so I easily spent 30, 40 exalts crafting this belt and I got a lucky. And that like, that's like not even a huge damage piece. So if you're like having to go and craft stuff like that, uh, yeah, I can see that being totally fine. I don't really mind if it's like uh, you invest, let's say, 200 x into a character and you can, uh, let's say, people who you, who make all these videos with that, like, look how fast I can kill Shaper, full HP Shaper, like, I can do it in one second. I don't really mind if you have, like, a 200 x build that can kill full HP Shaper in three seconds and then you would have, like, all the perfect mirror gear and you can kill Shaper in 0 0.5 seconds. I don't really see that as a problem. But when you can like I said, just completely neglect anything by like standing in a storm. I just don't see how that should work at all. Hmm. I, I think I'm, I'm think I'm mainly just triggered by the fact that people are standing in storms. Like whenever I see clips of people standing in storms, I'm like, no, please. Even if they would take 1% damage per second and it would take them then a hundred seconds to die, then fine, they're taking damage. But when, when, when nothing is happening to their HP bar, Nothing is going on whatsoever. I think my, that's just my triggering me personally. My favorite one is the guy who brought like an inventory full of void cards into the Cirrus fight and just sat there in the storm <laughs> yeah. opening them. Oh man, like I just hear that and I my heart is like, so like good. pounding. I'm like, God damn it, don't no, stop it. Like I, I don't know. But but like I say, Don, it like pushing like mirror tier gear is the only way that you should achieve something that crazy but i i personally never would want to see anything at all where you can just you can just be afk altogether at any point just feels really weird to me yeah i think it, it's it's 
when I the first time I saw someone literally like walk directly through the storm, yeah. like they, they zoned in to kill somebody's uh serious for them, <laughs> and like the storms are in the door. I was like, Oh, yeah, he's gonna have to wait and just fucking phase run, just ran right through, through it, up. walked right up to Sirius. Sirius is at 40% HP, uh, attacked one time, and they died. And I was just like, Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I get triggered just listening to this. I, get I was pissed, like, man. what the heck? Dude? Yeah. It, How is it, this legal? It, it's it's fun to see. Like it's fun to see a clip like that. But when you realize that like a ton of people are doing it and it's just a part of the game now, I'm like, man, nah. Nah. Feels this doesn't feel healthy weird. to me. Yeah. But like I said, if it's for one league, I don't really mind. People, people can have their fun. And it's, like I said, I know a lot of people are enjoying it. It's a fun thing to see, whatever, as long as it just does, doesn't stay. Or like I say, if they would add if they would add something crazy like Uber Series and people would still be able to do that even then at that hard content as well, that's just like, nah. So the thing I've always said is that, like, I, I feel like the goal, if I was developing Path of Exile... And like this is like to probably not what their development goals are, but like if my goal was I'm developing a Path of Exile league, what do I want people to think about this league both during the league and afterwards? I'd want them to feel like, oh man, you didn't play that league. It was insane. We had all these things that were going nuts. Like think about Legacy League, right? Oh yeah. man, you didn't play Legacy League. Mm. That was really cool. You could do all this like crazy stuff. You could add league mechanics to all these maps. And like people were like, man, I missed out by not playing that. But this league is also really insane too because there's all these new different types of mechanics and things and pieces that you could put together. And there's lots of ways that you can make that happen. And uh, I feel like Herald stacking and cluster jewels in general and just delirium in general is like going to have a really great legacy because people are going to be like oh man you didn't play legacy it was so rippy so crazy people were leaving hardcore in droves and then we figured about the power of herald stacking and then literally like you were just ignoring the entire game it was just a sandbox for you to explode mm. uh it's so crazy and as long as it's like that's in the past, I I'm fine with it. But like I I feel like the league mechanics should always feel incredibly broken, OP. Like what the hell? Uh, and they can dial it down later. And then the new league mechanic can come in. The new league mechanic can be OP. Uh, I think that is good. Mm. All right. So league mechanic, the one thing that I want to move forward in every other league forever. And there's one thing that I want to get rid of that they keep doing. Mm -hmm. One, they keep putting in a new league and then having it drop all the league rewards from every other league. Completely devaluing the content. Like, I don't want to go and do delve. I got an inventory full of fossils. It's irrelevant. I don't need to go and do my metamorph samples. Why? Because I've got so many oils that have hidden them. Um, because worthless because they drop from the league mechanic all the time and no one needs to go do lag lab because you can get a bajillion helm enchants by just throwing a few orbs on right like i don't want it i don't want the new league mechanics to keep handing out just a bajillion of everything else but what i do want it to keep handing out is scarabs so fucking plentiful that i can buy and run whatever league mechanic i want on my maps all the time actually my favorite part of the league availability yeah, of scarabs. scarabs i want to be able to run what i want and this let me do that i feel like scarabs are finally at the point at which i really wanted them from like the very beginning i was like wow these yeah. would be amazing if i could use them on every map too bad that would be yep. like uh financial suicide and now it's like now, i haven't bought scarabs and yet i juice like every map now now think what if um like what if breach stones and splinters didn't drop in full and so breaches scarabs and xana maps and randoms were the only way you got to get those splinters would those then I, be worth money and actually be worth picking up probably what if i do i do wish though that they would like kind of take a hint from this league and be like hey 
dropping an individual Zoff splinter isn't all that great. Maybe uh, none of the splinters should drop as you're doing the breach. And then as it closes, uh, as it like actually finishes closing, it should close probably a little faster. Uh, poop out pops the loot from the breach as opposed to it like popping out all over the place because oh yeah I start and like th- th- that's just one example but like I literally made two headhunters worth of like currency and doing stuff by farming nonstop delirium orb maps uh and I shudder now to think about how many simulacrum splinters I picked up and every time I run a map now on a non orb map and I get like 70 plus splinters I'm just like I would have had to individually pick up 70 plus splinters yeah. on this. <laughs> Even if running the orbed map would have got you 120 <gasps> splinters, and that might have been more, it's not you'd more. have to click 120 times instead of 71 in one stack, and you could just run another map and get another 70 instead. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just so terrible. Like I like I I felt at the beginning of the league that uh, all they need to do is they need to add. A delirium orbs to the, the main content they'd be great even though uh let's get honest they take up way too much space we have what 14 or 16 different types of delirium orbs uh that's just ridiculous especially like 22 is, is, there's 22 see, of them but see here's the thing if they took away the rewards of other leagues thing which is the stuff that i don't want there would be plenty less of them right there would be none well, no, you would still have like the jewelry and currency and uniques and so most of the bad and ones. divination wow, so cards. The currency and... league? That's what? the thing. Like you say, Don, it just becomes all the bad ones instead. You're like, oh, but don't want to run. them are bad. Don't want to run rare gear on this one. I will uh, buy uh, every single delirium orb anybody wants to sell. Five C and orb. It's easy all to of forget them. that the mm. armor smith things also drop like shaper and elder armor, right? Yeah, which is yeah. also Temple, off my filter unless it's item and level still... 84. And, like, yeah, so, me too. So no offense. But what they do is add below extra mobs. item level 84, shaper, elder, whatever, is like vendor trash. I like, literally don't show influenced bases unless they're 84 plus and tier 1 bases or 86 and other bases. Then you have to run uh, In some map. cases, there are yeah. 85s that like Explody shows up at 85 on a chest, so those show up, but like most but, like, of that is off. So <laughs> here, here's another non league mechanic, uh, Delirium or Fragmented. So Fragments, uh, yep. yeah, I, I literally sold, I think, 300 of every single type of Azir <laughs> Fragment. And uh, I don't know, I, <laughs> I, I handed them off to a, a, a very generous person who wanted to sell stuff for me, and I still have almost 200 of each fragment type. Oh yeah, I turned them off weeks ago. They don't, yeah. they don't, I, don't, I don't even see midnight. Yeah, because of the but, abundance of scarabs, I think a lot of people took fragments out of their filters, because they'd yeah, rather it, run three scarabs. But, no, no, it's, it's, it's not, not it's even not, that. The abundance, it's just, you get a bandage of fragments too. <laughs> yeah, you've, it's, it's that I've got if I had fragments on the filter, I could put 20 fragments in every map for the next six weeks mm-hmm. and and not run out of fragments. Like there's just way too many. They just, they just got turned off, but perhaps if you could drop the most full important Aziri part, set things, that'd be cool. Yeah. Here, here's the thing though. The most important part the about these Lyrium orbs <laughs> is the map, the mobs in the map. The mobs in the map are the best part. None of them are garbage. I love the fragment ones because fragments are hidden on my filter so I don't have to stop and do extra looting. But what I do get is a buttload of extra monsters. Like, there are no bad delirium orbs. I, I'm buying all of them. Every delirium orb that comes to me, I buy. <laughs> See, I don't almost even run any orb maps anymore. I think that if you have a fast build, the mirror is just enough. Like you be, maybe a little bit less rewards, but like if you're using fragment orb, for example, obviously you're not getting any of those rewards because you're not picking that up. I think you yep. just get the same amount of monsters, and uh, just by running the regular map, like I think just the base league mechanic is very strong, very strong. It's like Beyond on steroids, basically, but you can also use it with Beyond. <laughs> 
That's true. I I mean, I did the, the headhunter took me like five days to farm, and I didn't use a single lob on that. But now I'm trying out like tier 17 fully orbed maps. Well, I say fully like 80%. And that's mm-hmm. going pretty good, I think. Yeah, there's definitely some things you can do with uh, high tier maps that are profitable. Speaking of doing things with high tier maps, are you utilizing the favorite map system and what are your thoughts on it? It's okay. It's... Okay, does it does it do what it's promising? You I've read a lot of Promenade anyways, so I it's, I don't really notice it too much until I'm like, oh, I have like 10 burial chambers, but I don't really feel like I'm sustaining burials, but sustaining burials is also not something I give a crap about. Yeah, I feel like you don't. Like, I look at my map tab and I'm like, oh, yeah, I do have a few extra of these compared to the others, but it's nothing extremely major, I would say. It's not really like I notice, like, oh, I'm dropping this specific map all the time. It's just like you look and you're like, oh, yeah, I have extras of these compared to the others. So it's, so, I guess it's working because, yeah. So the favorite map system has enabled you to infinitely maintain any map you like. Um, and never run another map. I started with 12 burials and then ran burials for five days and didn't enter another map except to kill guardians. The problem is it doesn't work the way it was intended or the way, rather, it doesn't work the way it was described, which Mm -hmm. means you have to, you had to set things up a little bit differently than what was expected. Um, the change that was made to maps that wasn't told to us, as far as we can tell, is that map drops are region specific. They added an extra step. So it used to be you would roll what tier of map would drop, then your atlas bonus would apply, then it would search for availables in that area, right? In that tier that was left, and then you would get a random map based on on that formula that like three step process right base drop atlas bonus applied what's available but now what happens is base drop atlas bonus applied pick a region that has an available map at random and then Mm. pick a map out of that region Mm. which means the favorite system is nowhere near good enough to keep your atlas at work eight and have it fully completed if you want to maintain a single map. Because even though it's 30 times more likely to drop a burial chambers, you're still only getting a 1 in 8 chance for it to be able to drop a burial chambers when it's a 14. And then it's 30 times more likely to be a burial chambers. Right? Which is still like, there's only, you know, four other maps in there. So it's like a 30 out of a 35%, uh, like 30 out of 35 chances will be a burial. So most of the ones from that zone will be the burial. So you just not have any other tier 14s or? Pretty much. So you're not doing Awaken 8? No, I have to lower my Atlas to Awaken 5 to be able to do it. Yeah, to me that's like... it's. I don't like that as a solution. Drop Cortex, drop other maps like that. I just don't like not doing Awaken 8 level. I do not love that as a solution but it is the solution that works and lets you maintain any map infinitely. Now, I don't think that should be the way it works, and it wasn't the way we were described that it works, right? Yeah. The uh, way I mean, from what I understand... They, that they never the mentioned zone. the zones. Oh, yeah, the, the zones never never mentioned, for sure. Right, that, that's, that's the problem, and that's the reason it doesn't function the way everyone wanted it to function and thought it was going to. Because we didn't know about that one step in the map process, where they pick a region first and then a map inside of that region. And also I don't know why that it. exists. I don't know why it exists. I don't understand. And we're basing this purely on just me and other people testing it because I've not seen anything mentioned about it anywhere, but that's the only situation in which the results match like what it should be. Otherwise, otherwise... If it worked, if it wasn't picking a region, I could keep my entire Atlas at Woke 8 and still be able to not 100% maintain a map forever, 
but definitely if I was just happy to run like 12 of another map once a day, there'd be enough for me to stick in this map most of the time. That would, that's how the math works out, that I would be able to mostly run burials. And then if I'd just be like, okay, I'm going to run like this tier 15 for like an hour because eventually I've run out. That's how it should end up working out if it wasn't zone specific. But because it is, you just don't get enough. You have to shape, like move your atlas around and actually shape to be able to keep them. And I just not super in love with it. Yeah, seems weird. Seems uh, weird. <laughs> anyway, that's my complaint about the Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get there. I'm I'm going to work on on its heart. Going to have an opinion on that topic as well. <laughs> 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 if I don't die, it stays. It remains a mystery, exciting uh, journey for me. Uh, is there on that note anything that you want to add? I think Burger Rush. You haven't said anything about the favorite map system. What what maps are you running? Do you like it more diverse, or you like juice one map? You said in the beginning you're not too much a fan of juicing, but yeah, kind of like. Like Don said, I haven't really felt it affect too much. I have a little bit extra of some other of the maps that I've favorited, but I don't. Um, like I said, I'm a kind of laid back guy when I play PWE, and I'm much more community driven and just like go with the flow kind of guy. So uh, I just do every map. I just try to get as much awakener bonus as possible because I I like killing. Uh, you know, like Don said, like getting the guardian maps and and the cortex and all that shit as well. I think that's more enjoyable because I like doing that kind of content. And I, mean, I be, just to be fair, we're still getting like six cortexes a day. It's not like okay, it might actually be more like three, but it's uh, like still fine. Yeah, like I'm still running several of them a day, even at woke five. It's fine. Yeah, I don't know. I uh, so yeah, I haven't really done anything crazy like that. I just kind of go with the flow. Right. Yeah. On that note, I. I think we've been going for two and a half hours almost, and Oops. our <laughs> our aimed goal is to keep the podcast short and concise. But there was so much to talk about, and I think we could go on for much longer. I think at this point we'll uh, cut it off for the recorded version. Faded Connections podcast is uploaded in full to Valor Mage's YouTube. Those of you who haven't been able to join from the very beginning. And um, also currently looking, I think this will be the first episode that will be also available on other podcast services. I'll uh, tweet about that. So, yeah, you'll learn about that on Twitter. Um, before we end, though, I want to give uh, the guests the chance to promote their content and to tell you where they can be found, what you can expect from them. So, uh, well, Go the same opening uh, round as the opening round. Don, would you do us the honor of telling us where you can be found? Sure. Uh, from me, yeah, Don the Crown, Twitch, uh, also on YouTube. Uh, yeah, play a lot of melee, stream, try to do every single day except for Wednesdays. Uh, and we got a bunch of special stuff coming up. So tomorrow, we'll going to be taking part in one of the method meme races. So that should be pretty fun. And I believe either next weekend or the weekend after that, we have like a special event, which I do every month, Don versus Stream, where I try to go from level one all the way to the maps. Chat makes it impossible or tries to make it impossible. Last time, I ended up having to kill Kitava at level 39 on a two link. So uh, that was fun. <laughs> Did you get to use Hollow Palm? Yeah, I used Hollow Palm. Okay, Hollow that's Palm. okay. Cyclone, it? two link, level 39. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> I what was my the body second link? Uh, what to was five. the second link? Fortify? Fortify. Nice. For the survivability. But uh, yep. we, we've changed it so I can't throw my corpse at things anymore. So that, that won't be an option. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Burger? Well, uh, Burger Brush at uh, Twitch as well. And uh, I don't know, my YouTube isn't really that large. I guess I kind of started to focus on that a little bit lately, but I got a little bit going there as well. And 
yeah, I just stream a bunch of PvE, I guess, lately. I've been a large variety streamer for most of the time, but PvE has really dragged me in harder than ever the last couple of... The last year, I would say, I guess I started playing a lot again in 3.5 after taking a long break. And... uh He's back. I'm back, baby. And uh, I don't know. I, I just kind of chill and hang out with my community most of the time. And like I said, right now I'm just working on this project builds thing because there seems to be a high demand, at least in my channel, a lot of people for stuff like that. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. N not really doing anything specifically crazy, I would say. Sounds cool. I, I tried to link out in chat so you guys can click the links and leave follows if you're not following these amazing broadcasters already and uh yeah on that note i think uh we're gonna end it here and thank you guys for watching have a wonderful time and next faded connections shall be announced within the next two weeks and we'll do it in two weeks from now if everything goes well